yes, you guys complete the dungeon and start to exit your way out of the doorway towards the back. Um, and kind of led by Clyde Hemsworth Bartholomew the Seventh, uh, um, as he just wait. kind of like makes his way and stops. Oh, wait, Clyde that? is with us? I thought he went home. Was he not with you? No, he went I to go feed he, his babies. Yeah, he yeah, ran he ahead, he and he said he'd be back in like half an hour. Oh yeah. yes, yes. So yes, he does go, and kind of in the meantime, you guys have a little time, unless you want to, I don't know, check your surroundings or something, or any anything you want to do during the downtime. Honeyman just wants to go inspect the statue some more, see if she can glean any more clues to its identity, who it was. Hmm. The characteristics of this statue seem to align with some kind of like, like equal reputation as those kind of Bigfoot documentaries, uh, books, <laughs> books of that kind of reputation regarding some kind of great hero of legend of some kind that went missing. And this mm. one, the statue resembles somewhat uh, the similar description. Whether or not this means this was a real person or not, or if someone made it in that likeness, who's to say? So yeah, Honeymoon is just kind of spending the time uh, investigating, as, as it were, so. She's also busy pouting because she wanted the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phasos uh, is, uh, he's also a little bit pouty in, in a kind of a <laughs> huffy way, he's, you know, has his arms crossed a bit. He's just kind of like, looking around, impatiently waiting for this quote-unquote guy who everyone knows if he's even going to come back. I mean, he could just leave us. I mean, we had no... He has no obligation to return other than his word. And word so can... word isn't enough? Word can be uh, almost enough, but I'd prefer signed contracts. Yeah, it's honeymoon. Uh, this... Oh, because paper is way more important than somebody's physical, you know... Well, okay. then I have physical uh, proof. I can, you know, say, oh, look, here it is. You said this physically. Super oh, quick, Honeymoon isn't... leans around the statue and calls to Tibet. People lie, darling. And goes back to the statue. <laughs> <laughs> and paper can be burned. Anyways, what I was saying was... <laughs> yeah, her, her and Faze was probably going to go at it for a bit. Please. Is Lotilla doing anything? Yes, I wanted to look at these gargoyles because they just kind of died at the behest of the statue. Yes, and I they see. crumbled down to rubble. Dying. She's like looking between that and the statue. She's like, what kind of magics are here? Would you Honeymoon, like... you're magic. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yes. What exactly is going on with that? And she yeah, points to the statue. Yeah, Honeymoon looks up at it uh, and says, well, I'm not 100% sure. We're on a different plane of existence than our, than our material plane, so perhaps the magics work a bit differently, but from what I can tell from the statue, it seems to be of some sort of ancient hero of legend who maybe went missing or something like that. You some can check with Arcana if you would wish, like with yeah. uh, your Arcana stat. What is your Arcana stat? Uh, ooh, also plus three. Uh, with a plus three, you would know, just gleaning and trying to theorize what kind of magic this could be, it does seem like some kind of control magic. Like, whatever the statue and these gargoyles were, they were very similarly functioning to summons, from what you can tell, i.e. the gargoyles mm -hmm. being dismissed and whatever charm on the statue also being dismissed in some way. Perhaps. Yeah. That is a theory. Yeah, gotcha. Honeymoon kind of kind of taps her chin with a with a ringed finger as it were uh, and she says if i had to guess it um seems quite a bit like control magic um you know as various schools would do with summons or perhaps even constructs um, both the statue here and the gargoyles seem to have something similar oh so there's not a spirit trapped in there no it doesn't seem so well, if we're still watching. And I think she's gonna, she, in the language just that she knows, she's just gonna say, it was nice to meet you. No so response that's... back, but I'm sure if it, if the statue were alive, it would very much appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I got punched by a door today. You did, you <laughs> did. I'm gonna err on the side of <laughs> politeness. It has that's been quite a day. Um, yeah. Out of curiosity, do we get a short rest while we're uh, waiting around? You may, if you so wish, yes. 
Okay. All right, I'll take that. Get my wild yeah, shapes back. Neat. Uh, and I'll roll a I'll roll a hit die to top myself off. Mm-hmm. It's a Get my uh-huh. nice. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, Honeymoon's feeling fresh as do a. Do I kick? Sorry. No, I was just, I was trying to think of what honeymoon is this fresh as like I don't know Febreze. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm gonna roll my two um, fighter hit die. Fake but very pleasant. Uh yeah. So while you guys just kind of talk among yourselves and take in your environment, after half an hour, uh, Clyde, true to his word, returns back here, Ooh. and he he comes up to you. Uh, he seems to have a very spry spring in his step. And he kind of puts his little two claws together. Ah, now, good. I have tended to my spiders. Good to see that you are still here and have not traversed the island and its dangerous unknowns. However, I do regret to trouble you for one final request, if you wouldn't mind. Although I know I already owe you my life. Well, Uh, I think it would depend on the quest. And she, she kind of gives him a, a coy smile. Phasos grumbles. Uh, <laughs> just like, always more, always more. Yes, yes, changing the deal. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I, With much regret, I am sorry. But it has been a couple of days since I tended to them, and they, although they are capable hunters in and of themselves, so are the other inhabitants of this island. So I was trying to hunt this boar, one very juicy that I was looking for, but I unfortunately was not able to hunt it down in time on my own. You see, I'm quite scrawny from the two days I was starving in that little cell there, and it seems I've lost a bit of my moxie, as it were. If you could assist me, I would be greatly appreciated, and also I can tell you more about the island. All you wish that i know on our way as well a one boar hardly so, sounds like much trouble away from uh, here yes i did spot it traveling further deep into the jungle however not far from here it just slipped through my grasp as well how big is an insight check go ahead <laughs> yeah honeymoon uh, will also do one uh, i rolled a two okay well, that sucks all right looking at this creature with it and i'll show it to the to the audience as well just in case in case you needed something to look at while you Mm -hmm. chat yep you can see that his eyes are bright shiny with slight watering he's got puppy dog eyes as as best (laughs) as an edder cap could muster (sighs) you can see that he's got his claws kind of grasped together in like a little praying kind of gesture well yeah i honeymoon- suppose if we're going to oh sorry you can go ahead oh no i was just making another like a honeymoon is thinking to herself god what a pain in the ass but also i want that information so bad <laughs> yeah. uh yeah Fezos is, is gonna say well i suppose if this is how we're going to get our information it'll have to do oh it's much appreciated thank you so much he kind of reaches for your hand and shakes it without mm-hmm. you extending it back of course he just kind of <laughs> takes it and just shakes it firmly with both okay. of his uh although taken aback for a moment phasos will shake back so not to be just entirely pulled off of his feet um <laughs> as an aside to the group to beth is going to say I'm not sure I quite like leaving this area, considering we just solved all the puzzles. But um, I don't think we have much of a choice if we do want to get information. Oh, if you wish to return, I know the route here very well. Do you know what's on the other side? Right here, because we are right by the doorway. Yes, of course. It's just more jungle. There's lots of jungle Ah. on this island. (laughs) Okay, that, that helps me. In fact... I see that you have a little bit of parchment on you, good sir. Would you happen to be a cartographer? Uh, indeed, yes, I am. I can give you the complete runabout of the areas I have explored, if you so wish, if you consider that a better payment. Oh, uh, I, I do appreciate that. Yes, I, I do like to consult with fellows of, of uh, the same the same thought, yes. Then I give so it kind. willingly. And he kind of gives I... you a little pat on the back as he leads you outside. <laughs> Honeymoon just uh. squints at him. <laughs> She'll eavesdrop anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. She's going to figure out this island one way or another. So, Clyde leads you outside, kind of around the area, kind of traversing a very peculiar route around, and it starts to give you a kind of 
very detailed description and fl very flowery language about the areas that he has explored on the island. And you get more information and the, uh, your map now looks like uh, this. Ooh, Ooh. Wow. Yeah, Honeymoon is taking notes as, uh, as Clyde is talking. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, if he catches her eye, she, he, would, he would notice she looks a little bit, a little, just mildly offended. <laughs> Bezos is being a little bit snooty about this, as you uh, may be able to uh, imagine. Oh, of course. Tabeth is slightly pouting in the back, wanting mm -hmm. to go back to the treasure. So, Aww. Clyde describes for you the outline of the outskirts of the island, uh, although only certain parts of it he has experience exploring, including the west, which includes a lake of which the river that you guys were following leads up to, uh, the center, which is kind of an opening where another river goes to, however, it's not as dense of jungle as the one that you were just in, and then to the east, what he describes as the dark, uh, dark jungle. Oh. where kind of more hostile creatures reside, ones that he would prefer to avoid himself. At, at the mention of the dark jungle, uh, Tabeth will pop, uh, perk up and say, we wouldn't be happening to go to the dark jungle for your boar, would we? Oh, no worries whatsoever, unless you plan on going inside the volcano from that route. Of uh, which he continues and starts to describe that there are two entrances, which you can see here. Okay. Oh, to entrances into the volcano. He says he does not have personal experience going inside as he's never felt a need to, but they are there and they lead inside where the supposed various treasures that the uh, outsiders have brought into the island over, long, uh, over the course of its existence. Honeymoon would have a, a couple more specific questions. She would ask about a big thing in the river that she saw, see if he knows about that. Oh, yes. Hmm, that thing. I do believe that that might be one of the forms of the guardian of the island. As a guardian of the island? Yes. Well, it is something of a protector. It's an omniscient being that seems to be attached to the island that roams the place, taking various forms. I never know when they're truly around, but the others on the island seem to share trust in them, and so do I. They seem to shoo away any unwanted visitors as it were as we do occasionally get the odd adventurer here and there that's unseemly we'll say you can't do well with those unseemly types no no not at I, all i promise you we are very seemly here yes of course you've come to pay tribute haven't you uh, honeymoon mutters under her breath Bezos, shut the fuck up <laughs> Faceless is, by the way, being entirely genuine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes, I'm not an unseemly adventurer. I am a professional cartographer. I, I, I'm an upstanding citizen of the law, you see. <laughs> <laughs> How are we defining unseemly today? <laughs> oh, well. That is going to be an honest answer for Clyde. <laughs> a question for Clyde. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, whoever would come and uh, take the treasures from the volcano of the island, rendering the island a little bit more damaged as they leave. Pirates. Oh. You're talking about pirates. Ah, yes, I've read about those. Yes. It, you mentioned that the, the island would be more damaged if the treasure was taken. Oh, perhaps you're not fully informed on this. Uh, it's understandable. The information about the island has mostly been kept secret for many generations. Yes. So, this island, the one of which you outsiders call the Golden K, my home and home to so many others, many generations of you outsiders like to visit and give treasures to the islands, all housed in that mighty volcano at the center. Though what counts as treasure seems to be inconsistent, as I've borne witness to those giving up seemingly insignificant parchment and little wooden things that children fascinate themselves with. Toys! Ah, that's it, toys! Uh, whatever the case may be, I'd assume that counts as what counts as treasure is somewhat proportionate to the importance it has to the one giving it. And every time they do, there seems to be some sort of magical rejuvenation that spreads its essence into the island and inhabitants. Plants flourish, land forms, etiquettes become literate and well read. Mm -hmm. ah, quite right. Yes, but by no means do we ever starve in their absence, mind you. We've had a decade or two without outsiders before and done just fine, but ones who do give tribute to the island are always welcome. A welcome surprise. Does do those that give seen? tribute ever return? 
you know, often, no, it seems like oftentimes the ones who visit are veterans with not much left to do on the end of their line, finishing their big adventure, that sort of deal. Some seem to be tired of the inner seas and wish to retire and spend the rest of, rest of their days here. So would you say there is a society of those here, or is it uh, only very rarely? Uh, never more than a handful, and usually, as I say, they're on the last of their line or some sort. Usually the only ones that stick around are the creatures on this island, like such as me, or those little jumpy masked buggers. Oh yes, we ran into them earlier. Yes, delightful the... little dears. Uh, delightful, Clyde. but somewhat of a handful sometimes. Clyde. But yes, of course. Have you personally seen these people? Not a few times, on occasion. I have met with a very, very well, uh, well-known and red dwarf and man. I think it was Retoskman. He seemed to be a librarian, had a big, big obsession over history. In fact, he lent me a few of his books that he left on the island as well. You might find some of those in the, in the volcano. So, so long as you give them a read and leave them back in where they were. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Clyde, I, uh, you did mention it before. So we are in what you call the Outer Sea right now? That is correct. Could you tell me a little more about that? Well, there's not quite much history aside from hearsay among the various other creatures. And oftentimes we all speak a different dialect. So sometimes things get lost in translation. But I believe it was created by some group of magical strong beings from your land actually oh. some sort of escape from the greed of man or something of the sort honeymoon just says ah, and it continues taking notes without looking up <laughs> oh, greed i wouldn't know anything about that anyways <laughs> latilla actually sm swallows a laugh yes it was something i believe Somewhere around a thousand years, could be shorter, could be longer, I'm not quite sure, but it's mostly been remained hidden and spread through word of mouth. And there are other sort of things that they use as safeguards to make sure no unscrupulous adventurers come in, though the details of which I am not too privy to. Yeah, Honeymoon, yeah, she's trying to think of more things to ask, like, there wouldn't really be much point asking if he saw their, their like, companions, because he was in the uh dungeon for like several days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay oh well okay okay no I have, I have one thing she would ask um so mm -hmm. she says so this guardian spirit um what does it do to those who trespass with you know foul intentions well seeing as usually i don't hear of them after a large boom or kind of rustling in the leaves and kerfuffle happens i assume he kills them Oh, very good. Uh, yeah, Phasos, that's, that's all I got. Uh, uh, Phasos is, is uh, by the way, uh, in addition to, of course, noting down and drawing on the map what he is being uh, described to, he is also keeping an eye out uh, to our surroundings um, just to, to see, you know, if there's anything that's uh, around us that might catch his eye. Mm. Um, you do see, you know, those... Uh, mass creatures kind of spying out in the corner of your eye every now and then. They they don't okay. seem to be hiding, more so just kind of keeping distance. And gotcha. it, uh, Clyde does notice them. It's not like Clyde is unawares of them either, but he seems mm -hmm. to pay them not much mind. So originally with this walk and the talk of, uh, you know, cartography and stuff like that, um, Tibeth was pouting and just like, we are leaving the treasure, we're leaving the past, we're going to find a board, we're just <laughs> learning stupid things about this island that I don't care about, I just want the thefts in the island. Um, but the more that she's been hearing about uh, how the island works and the tribute system and uh, how people are dealt with or treat or like thought of as pirates when they come to steal the treasure, essentially, uh, and how it directly affects the inhabitants here, uh, She's giving a little more second thought on her uh, on her reasonings for being here, uh, in, in, her, in her duty here. Um, so she's going to let that simmer in the back for a while, but now she's going to be a little bit more attentive for the boar. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Joseph, what about what time of day is it? Because Honeymoon is, is antsy to get a look at the night sky, see what the stars mm. are like here. So <laughs> at about this time of day, it would be like mid to late evening, so the sun is about going down. 
Yeah, Honeymoon will be keeping tabs on that, and as soon as she starts seeing stars, she's going to start <laughs> making notes in her star map. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so Clyde guides you along various paths of the jungle, kind of helping you uh, across dangerous pits and territories cleaned by some less than friendly creatures, so he claims. At uh, one point, he sniffs out a wild boar uh, that he was hunting, and oh. he points it out uh, and just kind of like lays low. There it is, our quarry. And Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't. Anyway, no, okay. uh, so he points it out and clip art ping of a boar. Even though its characteristics are uh, very different than what you see from your world, it does look like the shape of the boar. The, uh, a boar. Its tusks seem to be made out of tree bark, and its wounds, kind of what may have been from the previous encounter with Clyde, uh, kind of glow with a dim cyan similar to the creatures that led you to the dungeon. Oh. Does it seem like it has meat that it can eat? Yes, you can see that even though it does have like kind of floating pieces of bark and the kind of glowy wounds, it does seem to have flesh underneath what seems like barky armor. Okay. It's like a mixture, kind of a fusion of the two. There it is. I could I... perhaps corner us, but no, no, that wouldn't work. Uh, what say you, friends? Honeyman looks at him and says, Is fire a bad idea? Oh, uh, far? Uh, I'm sorry, could you go into more detail? Honeymoon holds up a hand and, and casts Produce Flame so that a, it hovers over her fingertips. And then she just looks at the boar and looks back at Clyde. Oh, oh, I guess that could work. I do worry if it might go out, oh. considering how wet this jungle is. Hmm. Wait a minute. Um, you're, yeah. you're an Etta correct? I am indeed. And by your spidery nature, are you able to produce web? Why, yes, of course. Do you mind if I have about ten feet or so? If mm. you are able to. Oh, that seems doable. Uh, if you'll pardon me, this is not quite the most uh, flattering moment. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I, I will give you your space. Thank you, thank you. And he just kind of turns around, and you just hear... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, it's all done now. And you can Thank see you. that in his claws, you can see just a ball of silk as if uh, kind of put together like a ball of yarn. Oh, good. Excellent. Popped up a hairball. Mm. So, <laughs> many thanks for this. Um, one moment, and then she's going to take her, uh, she's going to take her knife and she's going, her little dagger, and she's going to tightly wound some of the, uh, silk to it and turn it into a rope dart. Oh! She's like, I've only used these a handful of times before this is for on, on seafaring vessels. Uh, she pauses at that to not say pirates for a second. <laughs> um, and she's like, I believe I can use this to at least embed into the boar so he won't be so uh, squirmy as he was before. Ah! Very Jill good gone. strategy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you guys would permit me, I'd like to sneak up and try to do a sneak attack on the hey, Wait, hold on. How do, you, how do we want to ask? She's, she, you're talking about the thing, and she gives you a blank look and says, Don't you have a gun? <laughs> I do? But how many times have I hit somebody with that gun? Uh, fair enough, I suppose. And also, a gun would probably alert the boar a lot quicker than me sneaking up on it. Well, unless, um, unless any of you would prefer alternatives. Well, I mean, if you need it startled in any specific direction or something like that, I'm sure a little bit of fire under its heels would do the trick. She kind of flicks the flame over her nails. <laughs> if you can get it within 15 feet of me, I'll take care of it. <laughs> let's let's gonna not exactly follow, but get in position to try and grab you if you start getting dragged. Okay, I'm going to say okay. each of you uh -huh. has one action you can do to try and hunt down the board. It's like a mini skill check. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, I know what Honeymoon would do. She would uh, level uh, level her hands kind of just behind the boar and shoot off a produce flame to try to scare it in range of both Tibet's rope dagger and Faisal's tattoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't have a battle map, but uh, okay. here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to put an enemy token, and you guys can put your own token on the board to show how you would like to orient yourself around this boar. Uh, so I don't have a boar token, so have this hellhound. Okay. Oh, yes. oh God. <laughs> Oh, there that boar looks different. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was about to say, that boar's very big. There is the boar, and, uh... And it's green, so we know it's a plant. Yes. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> like, you don't have to. So, Alrighty. yes, how are you guys orienting yourself? I will say you can get within 25 feet uh, before it notices you. So, like... Okay. Yeah, uh, about that. Well, then Honeymoon will kind of edge her way over here so that she can get a good angle behind it and start scaring it toward Tabeth. Any further, and I will ask for stealth checks. Yeah, no, Honeymoon's good here. Okay. okay. Uh, Phasos, are you going to cover left flank there, and then Latilla, do you want to try to cover right flank? Yes. Latilla would like to be in range. Basically, if it comes towards her, she's going to stab it. Okay. If she sees you getting dragged, she's trying to try to grab you. Yeah. And Clyde uh, happily awaits direction as well as he asks, Is there anything I can do to help? If you see it get past either of us, do your best to catch it. That's Very well. pretty much all I've got now. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. Oh. Oh, I kind of like the sound of that. <laughs> um, and she uh, prepares an uh, attack with her rope dart. All right. So I assume in the order of things, Honeymoon will go first. Yes, sir. Okay. Snap, crackle, pop. Yeah. Okay, All produce right. flame. Yes, it lands exactly where you need it to go, whether that be on the boar itself or if you're trying to get it in any specific direction. So Honeymoon is aiming sort of behind it to startle it into moving forward. Mm, uh, okay. Towards, so like kind of, towards the back. Yes. Yeah, she's aiming like right behind it, its back leg so that it feels the heat and gets and sees it and gets spooked. Yep. You are able to do so, and seeing as fire is not a common thing in this world, the <laughs> boar does just as expected. Squeals a little bit, kind of a low snort, and starts heading the other direction. All right, and then Tabeth is going to do her best to do an attack roll with her rope dart. Yep, which it, it has not uh, taken notice of you, so you will be able to do it with uh, advantage. Ooh, okay. yeah. Um, did not put it, I'm just going to use the dagger for now. Mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. And you do have advantage since you are attacking yes. out of the brush. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, um, yeah, fuck it. Uh, this feels important enough, just in case the fifteen. And before enough. you get another fifteen, would be pretty funny. Wow. Well, never mind. <laughs> Inspiration's gone, but okay. I got two fifteens. So. Oh wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. what, what? No, never mind. Sorry. Uh, no. Seek attacks for damage. Yeah. Believe it or not. A 15 is enough, luckily. All right. <gasps> so you stab it in. Let me see the damage. And I'm pretty sure because of your swashbuckler thing, you do get sneak attack since it's the only I, enemy around. I do. So it'd be uh, 16. Okay. Wait, uh, I think it's the 5 plus 16? Yeah, 5 plus, five 16. plus 16. Okay, yes. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of damage. You stab it with a lot of, like, just a very precise stab and it squeals out a little bit you see that it kind of spews a kind of bioluminescent cyan goop out of the wound and it is a pretty large boar about as tall as you are in terms of size so in order to hold it still i'm going to need you to make a athletics check okay fight help there you go. Okay, and the boar is going to roll against you. Okay, so you are able to hold the boar in place. However, it's still standing. And Clyde kind of jumps in and starts swiping. Like... Yeah, get his ass, Clyde. <laughs> he, could use, he could use some assistance. Phasos, okay. are you going to do your thing? Uh, yeah, Phasos, uh, seeing that it seems to be held and is now surrounded, uh, Phasos is going to come, come up and just going to start punching <laughs> his his fist is going to uh turn an inky black as he's gonna pummel down all right uh, you're gonna have advantage with flanking so plus two. Oh, nice okay so uh, that's that and then okay um let's do it again see if you crit yeah Ooh. oh my gosh almost, all right almost but not quite and then yeah whatever that that'll be uh, that and then damage to be a little bit damage um Ooh, 
Ooh. Bing bong. All right, yes. And with that, you punch it, and you hear a crack, and you break a f several pieces of the bark, like, f straight off, and the thing collapses. Nice. nice. Well, I think that'll about do it for your uh, little spiderlings. And you can see Clyde just, like, seems very satisfied. A very good and quick takedown. Thank you very much, friends. And uh. you see Clyde kneels down and kind of puts one hand gently on the now dead boar. Thank you, my good friend. You'll be for a good cause. I'm sorry you couldn't be the one on top this time, but such is the precious creature. Uh, such a precious creature. I must be sure to use every last bit of you that it does not go to waste. And he kind of takes a vine from one of the trees, wraps it around the boar, and starts to drag it. Come along then, All friends. Right. I've got a family to feed. Of course. Alrighty then. Yep, uh, we start falling. Yep, yep. Clyde, mm. uh, just as we're walking, she just wanted, mm -hmm. are you going to really use every last bit? Yes, of course. It would be disrespectful not to. You see, this no, island I mean, here, we're all in some ways family. However, we do all need to eat. I just wanted to know if I could get a small vial of that bioluminescent blood. That's quite interesting. Oh, I would be sad if you didn't. Go on ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. we'll get a little sample. A little Capri Sun for later. Mm -hmm. you can, oh! You can add <laughs> vi vial of bio bioluminescent boar blood to your Thank you. inventory. Cool. Mm, All right. Delicious. <laughs> uh, as we're as we're delicious. walking, um, Phazos is going to uh, kind of saddle over towards uh, Tibeth. Mm. Like just Tibeth some... sidle away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at, like Phazos comes in just like a a foot too close, and she kind of like inches away a little bit as they're he, walking. He respects uh, her boundaries and moves a little bit to the side. Uh -huh. ah, that was some very good thinking there, Tibeth. I've noticed you ha seem to have some bright ideas. Are you going to rope her into a pyramid scheme? <laughs> I was wondering it... <laughs> if perhaps when this is all over, you'd be interested in uh, working together again sometime. To that, it, like, internal monologue is like, don't say it, don't say it. Oh, I fucking said it. Uh... <laughs> I could use someone of your talents. <laughs> pray tell, what exactly... What use would you get out of me, do you think? Well, uh, as I mentioned, you seem to have a lot of bright ideas. You, uh, I, I definitely could use someone with the ingenuity to uh, help, you know, uh, enact my future plans, and perhaps uh, future plans of your own. I, of course, would know it would be a, a terrible uh, business uh, associate if I did not help you further your own designs. She is biting the bottom of her lip. <laughs> uh, and finally she's like you realize that this was more or less Honeymoon's idea right? She was the one who started the boar and to come to think of it she was the one who also set the lagoon on fire and she also was the one who opened the door so if anybody would be <laughs> Honeymoon's preening in the team, corner <laughs> I feel like it would be Honeymoon with how many bright ideas she has I just have the moxie to go about enacting the stupid ones. <laughs> he 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 kind of and, looks... he, and she says that just loud enough for Honeymoon to hear. <laughs> you can see uh, as you're saying this, Phazos' face over. goes from this kind of pleasant to this kind of grimace to yeah. this kind of uh, sly smile. Hmm. Perhaps I could use that instead. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, he, 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 he looks to, uh, uh, you know, off into the distance for a moment. Did we get off on a bad foot at some point, Tibbeth? I feel like we did. <laughs> I think the worst part is when they put your foot in your mouth earlier, but yes, I think I think we did get off on a bad foot. And uh, after that, she's done with conversations she's walking <laughs> forward with uh, Clyde. You can see he's about to start saying something and then just kind of Puts his finger down and just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> While this conversation is happening, Clyde just like slowly leans over to Lotilla and just goes, I am very uncomfortable with the energy we have established in the jungle today. <laughs> My sincere apologies, Clyde. I've never yeah. met outsiders that bicker this often. Is this normal? It admittedly, they're new to me as well. Ah. 
This yeah. is true. Uh, honeymoon, honey, Attila honeymoon has will... no experience with the rest of our group outside of this. Yeah, <laughs> Honeymoon will, after Phaedrus' botched recruitment attempt, to go to, just sidle up to Tibet and like link arms uh, and just give her a, a, a dazzling smile and walk and just gently pull her away from Phazos to walk with her instead. <laughs> I would like to continue with Clyde with just the comment of, I'm just tasked with keeping them alive. Ah, an honorable... And you've done a marvelous job so far, darling. <laughs> Thank honey you, honey. calls from behind you. <laughs> Wonderful. So as you guys follow Clyde a little bit further, it doesn't take long before he leads you to what looks like uh, an entrance to a large burrow. And he stops and kind of, like, positions the boar ready to be pushed on. Ah, and here we are at my home sweet underground. He turns back to you all. Thank you all so much again for getting me out of that mess. I can tell that you are going to be some of the best outsiders yet. And I think this may be where we go our separate ways. Uh, oh, but before I do, uh, I would like to make a request of you. One last um, one, I, uh, please. I <laughs> Mentally, to Beth is like another one. <laughs> Out of character, I, all, I, all I can think is a hole full of spiders. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and Clyde what? gently lifts and takes off his top hat and hands it to okay. whoever will take it. Hi, oh, I'll take it. Oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I would like to think that Honeymoon phases us both instinctively reach out for it. Yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we both kind of reach out for it up to him who he gives it to. He hands it and uh, hands it over to whoever will take it and says, Honeymoon. <laughs> you see, usually tribute to the island comes from outsiders such as yourselves, but all this time I've lived here, I never thought to check to see if tribute from the K itself would be sufficient enough to help. It, it is one of my most treasured possessions, the first gift I was given by an outsider. I want you to take it to the heart of the island and lay it within the volcano. If it weren't for you, my life may very well have been forfeit, and that would have been the natural fate of things. And so, seeing as that you may have robbed a few flies and maggots of my corpse, at the very least, this small part of me may help another part of the island instead. That is a very thoughtful gesture. Of course. Huh? As you all have done, you and your people have done the same for me for many generations. Very well. I sh we shall be happy to do so, Clyde. Internally, Honeymoon is praying to God that it will count as her tribute and the island will let her go when it's time to leave. <laughs> well, I have shown you the path inside the volcano. That should also help you leave. I've never quite learned the details of how it's done, but so long as you have that old trusty book that you always carry around, you should be fine. Yeah. Honeymoon says, full of confidence. Phasos <laughs> <laughs> well. immediately starts uh, to, 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 like, check his jacket pockets to see if it ended up in there. But then he <laughs> calms himself for a moment. Yes. Wait, book? Oh, book, right, yes, mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. And Clyde <laughs> gives you what you can assume is a smile? Yeah. <laughs> Gives what a you little can bow. assume from a, a dinner cap. Yeah, with mm -hmm. with little mandibles. So if that will be all, then. Best Farewell. of luck to you in your um, clutch, Clyde. Yes. Of course, you all have. And uh, do try not to wander into an, any more cursed temples. No, oh, I make no promises. I've taken after you, <laughs> adventurers, after all. <laughs> oh, Clyde. Well, in that case, I... be safe while doing it. Of course. And Could I see one of your children? I would be honored. <laughs> oh God! Let's go. Brightens and God. like <laughs> honeymoon's not scared of spiders, but Caitlin is. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Don't worry. No arachnophobia no, warning, as I have not <laughs> made any spider portraits for this. Thank fucking Christ! <laughs> so, Clyde turns back towards his uh, his little hole, his burrow, and makes a few clicking sounds with his mandibles. <laughs> And you can see coming out are various spiders of various sizes. You can see that there are fuzzy small ones, kind of large ones, almost the size of Clyde himself. And he introduces them to you, speaking in a tongue that is unfamiliar to you all. And the spiders speak back with very similar clicks. He gestures to you, seems to make a few kind of mimes of actions and such, and gestures to the boar, of which the spiders seem to be a little bit taken aback and do somewhat of a cordial bow to you all. Oh, oh. God, they're so polite. <laughs> 
Bezos does a little curt bow back. Honeymoon curtsies. Uh, Beth is bows has down. been taking a handful of steps backwards and also what? bows. <laughs> uh, Latilla bends down and like looks at Clyde and says, "May I hold one?" Oh, of course. Hmm, which one? Which one? Which do you think you can carry? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had the worst image of what if Lotilla picked it up, was like, aw, and then fucking unhinged her jaw and ate it. Yeah, it was just it whole in front oh, of God. Oh, God. Can you imagine? She just does, like, the, the dart attack that snakes do, just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, goodness. But, yeah, you can see that there are of various sizes. Which one would you like to pick up? Uh, would like to two-hand one of the fuzzy ones. One of the fuzzy <laughs> small ones? Yes. Yep, you do find something akin to, like, kind of a wolf spider-esque with kind of a lot of fur. Pick it up, and it seems uh, to be intrigued by your interesting skin texture. It doesn't seem like it's encountered a yuan tea before, and it kind of pitter-patters around on your fingers, taking in the the texture. Uh, she just says, hello. It does a hello. few clicks back I at you. I am <laughs> I'm Latilla. It is nice to meet you. And she gives the genuine smile. Aww. Well. Also imagining, what if Latilla didn't have any teeth but the two fangs? <laughs> <laughs> Just gums the rest of the yeah. way. <sighs> <sighs> She's going to put him, put the spider on Clyde's shoulder. He, he seems to play with it with a little bit of his claw. And Heather, go ahead, give yourself an inspiration for that. Aww. That's cute. Aww. Hell yeah. She's got a little bit of a soft spot for kids. Hmm. Aw, Lotilla the softy. <laughs> Softilla. Aw. And you can Softilla. see, as as you do, you can see that a few other spiders kind of circle around you as well, kind of, like, very taken in by you, seeing as you are the one that approaches them. If you want to ride. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a few minutes of them kind of crawling on you and just taking you in you know the snake tail especially and after like a few minutes uh, Clyde is like alright alright that's enough it's time for dinner now come along come along come on get they all kind of start to skitter back into the burrow he gives one final bow and pushes the boar in along with the help uh, of some of the more larger sized spiders into the burrow uh, honeymoon uh daintily picks some some wolf spider hair off of Lotilla's shoulder and says, "You're going to need a lint roller to get all this off." That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I swim enough. Ah, I suppose all that right, would work. So back to the oh. temple. Well, I mean, we know the way to the to the the, the volcano. We now, were being guided. Was was our goal not on the other side of the wall? We 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 went through that. Oh. Yeah, Joseph, can you show us the map again, please? Yes, I will. So, um... I thought we went back out through the entrance. No, we no, went, no, 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 we no. went through the other side. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you are somewhere around, let's say, like, here-ish. So, okay. you have the ability to go, um... So, yes, there are three additional areas now that you can traverse uh the more kind of open river the lake and the deep jungle each of these three locations will lead you to an entrance into the volcano if you so wish you know to go there um and even though the river is right down the center, it just means that the travel time to reach either side will take a little bit longer since you are not taking a direct route. Out of character, the dark jungle would be really funny. <laughs> Do we have any good reason to go through it, though? It'd be fucking funny. <laughs> character I... reason. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I can't think of any character reason why we would go through the dark jungle. Uh, but... Yeah. I do uh, have a character of... reason for the lake. Oh. Yeah, I mean character I mean lake is just fine. I mean And that's where we saw the footprints going and I sure would like to know where our guy is so we can steal his fucking book. I like Lake. Uh yeah. also out of character Joseph, is it nighttime yet? Is it dark yet? Just about to the point Maybe. where you can see like dim light coming from the lake direction and mm -hmm. smoke. <gasps> mm. ah. Well, okay. 
Honey, yeah, Honeymoon will then vote Lake because that should give her a pretty good view of, of the sky overhead. There won't be trees in the way. Okay, so yeah, Honeymoon votes Lake. 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 Lake it uh, is then. Lake it is, yeah. Phazos doesn't <laughs> really care. He, he, he Actually, Phazos does care. He thinks the lake is a good idea because it might allow him to map some more of the uh, the upper areas if we're able to go, you know, a bit north of the lake. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some hills there. It looks. So you guys follow the directions given by Clyde, kind of avoiding certain territories that he says are places of more kind of rough creatures to be avoided, territorial creatures. And as you head towards the lake, you start to see more of the little mass creatures getting more and more dense, and you hear familiar voices Ooh, speak, speaking in common. Ooh. And as you Whoa. head closer and closer, and the light starts to become brighter and brighter, and the smoke gets closer, you reach the lake, and you follow a path and make it to see this. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, sick! They're alive. Is that is that Theo? Yep, I gave Theodore a <laughs> portrait. Theo has a he face. Has a real That's portrait. incredible. Yay! He looks so so disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> poor poor Theo. And boy. as you as you approach, kind of the um where the lake meets the river, you can see that various mask creatures. Uh, kind of notice you and they all start to pound their masks uh kind of in excitement seeing as now you have kind of made it to the other side and have met up with more of you and seeing this yeah. you can see that it is sharn and theodore and they take notice of you immediately honeyman uh, says hello to the the little guys in abyssal they all seem to be very excited and kind of banging mm. their masks in yeah. response yeah. Uh, yeah, i'm gonna start that. walking forward same. The face knock thing. Back at them. <laughs> well, also walk forward as well. As Sharn notices you, I'm gonna bring up her portrait once again, just show up for yes. talky stuff. Sharn notices you and goes, "Oi! I know those folk." <laughs> oh, you're Miss alive. Red Snout. Likewise. Oh, that's a relief. I'm indeed. Is it uh, quite safe to cross the river? Oh yes, of course. You might uh, find it a good place to. Uh, Patch yourselves up as well and wash yourselves. I know I did. And she looks over at uh, Theo, and you can see that Theodore has kind of bandages all around his hand. And he, he sees you all, and he, like, waves it with that injured hand a little bit, and then he immediately, like, ah, 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 ooh. <laughs> yeah, Honeyman will lift, lift her skirts and start crossing the river. Yep. She oh, comes right. to meet you halfway, and she seems very excited. It's such a relief. Oh, have you run oh, into any of the rest of the crew? Anyone at all? No, you're the first we've seen besides each other. Ugh, jam. Phazos hmm. is going to take off his socks and shoes, <laughs> hike up his pants, and then cross the river. Well, maybe, uh, maybe they're out there somewhere. The... <laughs> I suppose. I, I did see some footprints on the beach, but those may have been yours. They might have been. Tibeth is, like, still standing on the other side, <laughs> looking uh, across. Can... Is my passive enough to notice this? It's like a it's honeymoon. All it, honeymoon <laughs> point. Oh, honeymoon will look it. over her okay. her shoulder and say, "To Beth, darling, aren't you?" Oh, I guess you do have a thing with water. I got it. Slightly. Uh, well, till a fairy it time. Hurt, it, 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 <laughs> possible. Her it just arms. hurt a little. Oh, uh, you're picking me up. I see. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Cool. I'm just fucking yeah. bridal carried across. You are bridal carried <laughs> easily. <laughs> Easily bridal oh, carry. Plopped down, and she's like, well, thank, thank you. Uh, that was <laughs> unnecessary, but but very much appreciated. Completely uh, necessary. She, she, uh, Tibeth is very flustered. Um, <laughs> but uh, hello, Sean. Hello, hello. Hello. Good to see you alive. Yes. Uh, uh, that boy. I was lucky enough to wake up next to him on the beach, and I'm going to show you a portrait of Theodore. Yay. Yay. He go. was so worried. Oh, I hell love yeah. Theodore the Test Tifa. Yep, the Test Tifa. Oh, he tifa. has a last name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Parose. Parose. Nice. Parose. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so she kind of looks to you. She looks very relieved. Have you seen the captain anywhere? No, no not, not at all. Not yet. We were mm. hoping when we saw the fire that the, or the smoke that perhaps he was here, but. I. Uh, 
Though we owe it all to these little creatures around us, these things. They've uh, oh, yes. led us to this fresh water. They've been very helpful and kind. Oh, they were quite helpful to us as well. Um, they showed us um, a strange temple sort of area where we got some some good information. Oh, you've yes. learned about the island. That's good, because um, they're bit. not exactly the talkative bunch. No, it's it's true, but if you know any abyssal, you should be able to talk at them. Oh. I uh, may have skipped that class. <laughs> <laughs> Same, honestly. When I hear that, it's just a little bit unnerving, especially from <laughs> Langley's mouth. Anyway, <laughs> yes, we've 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 learned quite a bit. Uh, namely, there is a mystic guardian that is uh, watching us at all times, apparently. Um, yes, and we're somewhere in what the in what locals call the outer sea. We're not on the material plane. Aye, that is what the captain called it when he read from his little book. Yes, and also that. Um, essentially, the gifts given to this island, the treasure that we're looking for, is, in essence, the life force of this island. And what makes it such a magical place? To an extent. Yeah, yeah it's sort of and, a tribute. Yes, as far as our contact uh, informed us, they, uh, they are able to survive without uh, tribute uh, for some period of time. Uh, we don't know to what extent. But apparently, uh, taking the uh, treasure uh, in some way damages the island and also may or may not anger a mystic guardian that is looking at us at all times. You can yeah, see both British... their eyes go wide a little bit and they look at each other. And Sharn just kind of looks back. That does change things a bit. Yes, and also... I would say yes. And also, um, based on what our contact... <laughs> she kind of... <laughs> It gives, like, verbal air quotes with it, glancing at Phasos. <laughs> um, it would seem that we need the book that the captain had to actually get off the island. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Well. So, you know, find the captain, get off the island, we're fine. We better find him soon. I don't know how much longer I want to stay here. Well, the, yes, these little um... fellas are not that much of a problem. I guess that's true. They have kept uh, us safe. The sooner we're off the island, the better, in my opinion. I, uh, personally have much more life to live. You know. Honeyman gives him a doubtful look. Aye, I've got, <laughs> folk, I've got folk back home myself, and so's a boy. Well, we know he's not here. <laughs> Tibeth is just kind of like doing the rocking back and forth <laughs> a little bit. It's like, yes! Lots of people back home to be worried about and care about and go home to. Well, Those people that love me for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever the case may be, I think maybe perhaps certain shin forum after such a long day might not be the best thing. And yes, yes, uh, about now, realized. it would be basically sundown. Yeah. Honeymoon, well, she'll say, I, I think it would be wise if we all had a full night's sleep. Before we try to look for him. I must I have been a long our... day for you. Best get some rest. Oh, indeed. Yes. I believe our best course of action is to keep the fire lit as long as we can through the night. Uh, the smoke may be visible and uh, contrasted to the, the night sky. Uh, I... So perhaps if he's out there, he can find us. And if not, whoever's keeping watch may be able to see if more smoke appears somewhere else on the horizon. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, was this the smoke that you were talking about originally? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I, I, I couldn't remember if you were talking about around the lake or back by the beach, and that's why I was like, okay. Yeah, around the lake myself. area, so. Gotcha. Oh, sorry, yeah. Honeymoon, when the conversation seems like it's done, she will excuse herself uh, and start, now that the sun has gone down and she has a better view of the sky, she's going to start... Uh, walking around, uh, maneuvering around the fire so they don't have to put it out to get, uh, as stars start showing up, she pulls out her, her scroll, her star map, uh, and begins making notations of both the stars in the sky and the features of the land that correspond, like, directly below them as well. Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, and so she's going to spend a while doing that. Yes, you're able to chart the skies, and looking over the stars, you can see that it's almost like whoever, like, it 
feels like an artificial sky that someone mm. manually arranged the stars and very much used your world as a template, kind of like Ooh. in order to, it's like if someone were to make a new language, but it's just a swapping out of the same letters and symbols and Gosh, using yes. very similar grammar. Oh, yeah, Honeymoon mm. excitedly notes this down as she kind of traipses around this little clearing. Mm -hmm. Bezos is, of course, catching a glance at her uh, star mapping. And I mean, he would, he sees that she consults, like, the map of the, the terrestrial maps as well. Like, she doesn't discount those. Yeah, no, he, he's actually taking note of that uh, mm -hmm. as, as, he, as he's, he's watching you. And he's watching you uh, kind of intently, but then he's, uh, if, if, if she ever is taking notice of that, which with her perception she probably <laughs> yeah, she would, would. He, he is going to uh, kind of give a, 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 a sneer, though... It's almost half-hearted, the sneer, mm. as, he's, as he's looking over. I also want to note, seeing as there is no star chart of the Golden K anywhere, these are constellations that have never been named. <gasps> Honeymoon is jotting so many down and like, writing down like, which shapes might be good constellations and like, what she should name them. She's, she's got a whole list going. Um, but, uh, when, when she catches, like, Phasos and he gives her, like, the half-hearted sneer, she, she just kind of, like, get, half smirks and, like, wrinkles her nose at him, uh, and then goes back <laughs> to it. It's almost playful. Hmm. Aw. So, yeah, she spends a while doing that. Tabeth is just kind of, has her back to the fire, just kind of watching Honeymoon <laughs> go about her business, uh, mapping the stars, and, you know, it, it's interesting to, to her to see that kind of tar cartography being used. Mm -hmm. At some point in the night when she, uh, I feel like as, an, as, as the evening goes on and she's doing more, uh, she's starting to like pace a lot more and the heels are getting in the way. And so she just takes off her, he her heels and shrinks <laughs> by four inches and, and traces around much faster. Nice. nice. As you are pacing around, you can see that like every like little mass creature in the area watches you like a tennis match, you know, like head <laughs> following you every which way you go. Oh yeah. She's, she's like walking incredible. like down, like, a, like, like in the river, skirts hiked up, mm -hmm. uh, walking like this way, standing on top of rocks. She's getting fucking everything. Faisal, so if she gets attacked by a hippo, tap me. If she gets attacked by a hippo, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> while you do, I have to try. while you do, you can see Sharn is like watching you intently, like like one cheek on her fist, like while it's being propped up by her fist, and she has a big smile on her face. Honeymoon, at one point when she catches Sharn's eye, she'll wink at her. She, give me a charisma check. Oh. God. oh. Oh, my Christmas not bad. It's just not like a prime stat for her. Okay. Oh, that was a save. Sorry. Uh, oh, it doesn't what's matter. Your, what's your bonus? It's not, say, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not proficient, so it's the same thing. Okay. So 15. She is startled a little bit by that, like she didn't realize she was staring. And she kind of looks around. You can see her greenish face turns a, a slight olive a little bit. Oh. Can, I, can I, since we're both Honey, looking at Honeymoon Beatles behind her hand. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, since me and Sharn are both watching Honeymoon do this, can I say that Tabeth notices uh, <laughs> sh this exchange between her and Sharn? Oh, yeah, easily. She looks over at Sharn and like, kind of leans in and whispers a little bit, I'd be careful with that one. She's very <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> oh, well, of course. Uh, yeah, it's just um, Yeah. No, just it's, for the it's... humor, as, as Honeymoon passes, uh, she overheard that last bit and she says, Watch out, darling. I bite. And, like, chomps her teeth once playfully and then goes this way. She just <laughs> takes one river. hand and, like, kind of screen covers the side of her face a little bit and, like, turning back <laughs> towards the fire. <laughs> uh, Tibet's oh, hair also fun. grows uh, glows a lot brighter also. She's like, <laughs> like I said, be very careful. And she's going to scoot away from Sharn and stop watching Honeymoon. Uh, <laughs> Honeymoon's motto in life is that text post that just says, you want to fuck me so bad it makes you look stupid. <laughs> uh, could I go ahead and... I wanted to inspect Theodore. Theodore? Yes. Uh, like, how so? I want to check on him. <laughs> check on him? He, he sees you and he's like, uh, oh, hi, Miss Lawtilla. Uh, thanks for trying to help me. Uh, sorry that I couldn't be helped even though you tried your best, which you did a really good job. I'm sorry it didn't succeed. What well, happened? Oh, well, after I went under, uh, I don't remember much, but I woke up on the beach and uh, 
Well, he just shows what looks almost like a little nub where his hand would be, but it looks oh, to shit. be it I looks to be wrapped up, so it's hard to tell how much damage there is. It's completely mm -hmm. wrapped in gauze. Boy, do you have all does, your fingers? Does he have a hand? Sharn uh, kind of looks back. I um think it'll be better when you see it once it heals. And you can see that uh, Theodore just sighs and shrugs his shoulders a little bit, looks down on uh, kind of the ground before him. Well, it's not like I was all that competent with a full hand anyway. Theo, how old are you? Uh, about uh, 20 summers. You'll have time. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I've been three years. She puts years. a shoulder on, <laughs> she puts a hand on his shoulder and he just goes, you'll have time. I guess so. Three years on a ship hasn't really proved much. Uh, it's only when you hit the 15 mark that you actually start seeing progress. Well, uh, I hope so. He just kind of looks down. It looks like he's deep in some kind of thought. How do you, how do you guys do it? What? I don't know. Just be certain that things are going to be all right, that you're going to do it, you know? You all seem so good at what you do. Step one, be evil aligned. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, plot armor. <laughs> uh, Bezos is actually kind of listening to this. He's going to speak up. It took a lot of hard work. I didn't... I didn't start as successful as I am now. And uh, honestly, I thought I was going to fail many times. But I persisted. And after a few lucky breaks, I was able to make it where I am. I'm sure that in time, you'll have your, your own bits of success and one day you'll be a, a right good uh sailor yes oh well maybe uh, that's where i went wrong uh, 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 at phasos this... oh, oh sorry, sorry. uh a honeymoon has wandered back over here she's about <laughs> done uh and she she goes to plop down to dry off and she says to theo there's a lot of heartache and failure that comes with success and getting good at something it hurts, but it's all part of the process. And eventually, you get to a point where you can live with it and you can keep moving forward. He kind of drops uh, his cheeks in his hand. Oh, to Beth, you first. I was just, I was just gonna say during Phaser's entire speech, to Beth is like gripping the grass <laughs> so fiercely with her hand, like like she has her like hands out to the side, like she's like leaning back a little bit but she's like gripping the grass so fiercely with her hands she starts making like a tiny little embers and I'm stuff saying, around it baby girl uh, you're gonna set it on fire <laughs> uh but yeah no continue uh theodore just kind of like puts his head like resting between like two palms of his hands propping his cheeks up oh maybe that's where i went wrong my folks they always gave me everything and everything always just kind of came easy well, and maybe that's why I don't really know how to do much, you know? I was hoping that coming out on this ship and being part of a crew might have taught me how to do stuff on my own. Well, Ma and Pa always kind of did stuff for me. Too bad well, I'd like to interrupt. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, at this, she loosens her grip and, like, gently pats out the fire, in, in hope, <laughs> hoping nobody noticed. Uh, she's going to say... Noticed. <laughs> she, she's... Of course she did. Um, she's going to come on up a little bit closer to the group. And she's going to say, well, I can tell you from my experience of having a little bit of both. You know, a little bit of caring family that will take care of you. And a little bit of not having anything to your name. That the difference between all of it is truly and deeply wanting something. And striving your very best to get it. What wow. do you want, Theodore? Conviction. Hmm. He looks up into the deep starry sky. He looks down onto his wounds. Well, right now, I really want to get off this island and go see my folks. Well then, yeah. I'm sure that with all of our collective conviction to do so, we'll do just that. Honeymoon uh, sidles over to him. She's, like I said, she's shorter now. She's still 6'3". <laughs> she's but... shorter now. Um, she sidles over to Theodore and very, very gently and carefully takes his wounded hand, uh, and she says, Well then, my darling, use that conviction to help get you off this island. 
Mm. And tell your folks all about it when you get home. And she'll cast Cure Wounds on him. Aww. Aww. Well, thanks, Miss Honeymoon. Oh, sure. <sighs> yeah, Honeymoon gives him kind of a, a slightly... So, so just a very small smile and says, You have folks to go home to and tell about your adventure. Revel in it. And she gives his more healed hand a, just a, a very gentle, like, squeeze, like a encouraging squeeze, and then goes a, back over yonder. He has a big smile while he says this. Ow! Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought it uh, would have been uh... better. My bad. Lotilla, or you're just adjusting. Oh, um, yeah, sorry. Let me move okay. some of these. Bezos does want to have a moment with Lotilla if. Uh, oh, when? That is, any time. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you know, after the conversation, if it's all good with everyone else. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bezos can go about collecting his crew. I did want to do something with Honeymoon as well at some point, just because of yeah. her comment right then. Yeah, this is the perfect okay, time to get to get all yep. this out. Okay. Yeah. Good. The calm before the storm. And so, mm. so I think it was Latilla and Honeymoon next. Yes. yes. Okay. And it's then Honeymoon Lata and Bezos. Yeah. Honeymoon had a comment about cherishing family once he gets back. Yeah, he, like, I think she said, you have a family to go home, tell the story to, you know, enjoy that. Yeah. Mm. See ya. Mm. Okay. So yeah, Honeymoon. Honeymoon is just adding notes to her star map, kind of just pouring over it. She 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 looks up and her her jewels all dangle on her horns. It's like, hmm. I'm gonna sit down next to you. Oh, yes. You don't have anyone to go back to either. Uh, honey, honeymoon just kind of sighs dramatically, and she says, <laughs> "Well, sort of. I think I've got a cousin and a grandparent, but <laughs> no, not in particular." She kind of she kind of twirls some hair around her finger, debates getting into it, and then thinks, "Ah, oh, what the what the hell?" Uh, and she <laughs> says, "I am actually the latest in a pretty in a long family of star mappers. We've all for generations. My family's been trying to find this island, and none of them have come back. So, I wanted to be the first. Hmm. Internally, Attila has said, "Challenge accepted." What? <laughs> What does no, that mean? I mean? She's charged with keeping you alive. Oh, very good. <laughs> I mean, Honeymoon is pleased with that. Uh, you know what? She just says, she, she's going to lean back and just go, okay, I can do that. The, mm -hmm. the honeymoon kind of <laughs> blinks. For once you've stumped her. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? Uh, keeping you alive. Oh, that's very kind of you. I, I mean, I certainly appreciate it. Not not quite the um, stalky heavy hitters like you and Phasos over there. Phasos <laughs> <laughs> does that uh, react. <laughs> Sharn speaks up and kind of trying to not make eye contact with you, honeymoon. You know, mm -hmm. um, I know you're only contractor for this job, but um, seeing as you're very proficient with you know your star charting. Uh, if you wanted to become full time, I'm sure, you know, hopefully the gods permit, if the captain's still around, he could use a charger like you, you know, to have on board for his sake. It's <laughs> <laughs> giving her a knowing smile. <laughs> uh, and she kind of taps her chin. She says, well, assuming we're able to get out of here alive in one piece, and I would be looking for another project to work on. Certainly something to consider. She, she, she gives her a, a, a smile. She gives a smile back, but she looks a little melancholy, looking back down at the reference of, of the captain again. Mm -hmm. I do worry for his ship. I saw pieces um, on the shore. Oh, yes, I'm not quite certain it survived the voyage. Honeymoon. Thing... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, it's probably the worst thing that can happen to lose your vessel. Honeymoon pauses, then says, Um, Sean, did you know about any official business the captain may have had with, I don't know, kingdom officials or some sort? She perks up a little bit at that. Oh, no. They get to him. 
Well, I don't know for certain. I didn't have a chance to ask him before we arrived here, but while we were boarding, I overheard a conversation between him and what looked to be some sort of um, official messenger, and it sounded like perhaps the ship was no longer the captain's. Ooh, she sighs and leans back a little bit, kind of takes one hand and pushes back her hair a bit. Uh, all the while Captain spent his life on that ship, people were constantly getting in the way of him and his life on the seas. L folk with business don't like seeing others being potential rivals, least of which the South Belkin is Sea Trade Company. I'm actually going to look at Phasos at that. Yeah, Fezo said the, the, the mention of uh, people having a competition and not liking that. Uh, <laughs> he does kind of dart his eyes uh, to the ground uh, for a moment. Well, I'm actually mm -hmm. going to pull him. Do you know anything about this company? Hi. Uh, ooh. Oh, 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 Fezos. I see. It could either can pick it up because it was it was directed at Fezos, but if Shorn's not, if Shorn can take it. Um, do, do I know anything about that company? Um. um <laughs> yes, Phasos. You would know that it's probably the premier kind of company that a lot has kind of absorbed a lot of other privateering, you know, groups just due to its sheer mass as a company. Mm -hmm. um, and that Rackmorn was one of the few independent groups that could compete in terms of quality service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Phasos, uh, you know, kind of relays that there are. Very successful company, and um, unfortunately so. They seem to be uh, expanding uh, more and more. He, 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 he does kind of grimace uh, thinking about them. Um, um, may, may I also ask if I have knowledge of that, since I've been part of uh, pirating in these waters for... Many you have. Years. They've caused you no little bit of trouble. Some seemingly justifiably so, but they, you know that they've done some underhanded tactics with the law. Kind of like they could arrest you for totally re legal reasons, but they themselves have exploited some of the pirate crews that you've been on. Kind of like maybe taking more than they should have legally, you know, maybe needing to turn you in for legal reasons, but maybe taking uh, doing some collateral damage as it were Tibeth is going to hold her tongue to wait to see what phasos finishes telling and his perspective on that yes um yeah he 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 is kind of basically just grumbling about how they're uh you know getting a bit a bit big for his liking mm -hmm. you know <laughs> i they've been badgering him in every which way they could lobbying for tariffs on certain trade that Rackmorn had business in, getting extra guards' eyes on him to catch any little misdemeanor, and all the while slowly bleeding him dry of both his funds, keeping him afloat, and his reputation. I wouldn't be surprised that taking this job to plunder a hidden island what has treasures beyond one's imagination may have finally proven all the rumors right in some minds, and given yeah. the sea trade company enough push to finally get a filthy paper out on Rackmorn's ship. She's, uh, Latilla sits up and goes, hang on, could they have been the one that set the one tea collective on us? She takes one hand to her chin a bit. They do have access to pretty much every other kingdom in the continent. I wouldn't be surprised if they extended beyond that. Has, has Tibeth ever had issues with the one tea collective in the waters? Via Not power? that you would have known if you have. Like I, like I said, uh, you have dealt with the kind of South, uh, South Balkan Sea Trade Company in your pirating days. Maybe they might have worked with them. It's possible. As far as I'm concerned, they aren't much different from pirates. And huh. their influence extends quite a bit more than you would expect. Aye. But you try telling those who wield all the power and money that. Oh, I have. Hasn't worked out quite well, but I guess I suppose that's why I'm here now. Agreed. They're no better than cutthroat pirates what cheated their way to their trade. But not Rackmorn. He's an upstanding sailor, I, uh, as is the lot of them, even if some of them up and jump ship. But 
They're just looking after themselves, same as all of us. Yeah. Do you think any of those fellows ended up here? Maybe. I don't know if I worry if they're alive or dead, considering the earfuls that Captain's going to give them. So I wonder where, if, if the captain did land on the island like the rest of us, I do wonder where he would have gone. Well, seeing as you confirm that he might have lost his ship either to the sea or to the company, the only thing I think he'd care about is getting to that bloody treasure. Indeed. Well, there should be a way into the volcano not too far from here, but otherwise there was there were other ways in that we know of. Oh, you've mapped it out. So to an extent, uh, our our contact gave us some details. Very good. Yeah, honey, honeymoon will will show her the updated map. Oh, she looks it over, and you can see that the various other creatures kind of circle around her as well and like kind of <laughs> peek in over her shoulder just kind of look at it they're kind of pointing at it and pointing around themselves being almost like they recognize what you've kind of charted down <laughs> hey i live there <laughs> that's my tree <laughs> like i said very impressive and uh you would be very appreciated on board <laughs> she hands it back uh, to you yeah <laughs> does honeymoon just kind of like Look at Bezos at that remark. <laughs> I feel like no. This time she actually doesn't. She just kind of like very, very lightly kind of flips the ends of her hair with her the back of her hand, and she says, "Well, I will certainly consider it, but first we need to get home." And uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she <just> looks around. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Bezos, you wanted to do something. Yes, uh, yes. Bezos has Lotilla things. Um, so Phaseless is going to, uh, you know, as the, the, the conversation kind of dies down and people kind of, you know, go to their own thing, he's going to, um, you know, approach, uh, Lotilla. Um, Lotilla, may we speak for a moment? Sure. Here? Hmm. Uh, here is fine, or we can move somewhere else. It matters not to me. Uh, I mainly wish to, to, to mention that... I'm very impressed by your loyalty on this mission. You seem so driven. All right, you here know, it comes. You wanted to, 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 to find, uh, you know, our, our, our compatriots and the crew and, and keep us all safe, and I very much appreciate that. Well, Phasos, if we have one thing in common, I believe in contracts. Yes, quite. Uh, he, he kind of smiles at that. To bed and rolls her eyes. <laughs> Is, is this conversation private? I don't think so. It's not like super okay. private, but it's he's not like We're announcing not to the world. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to make sure, like, okay. so, so like the, the rest table. of us don't. Yeah. Yeah. He he he's just like, well, on the 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 note of contracts, um, I I very much would like to uh, just uh, put forth the idea that perhaps in the future, should the need arise, I may be able to get in contact with you again. And perhaps contract your services and your loyalty for uh, some future endeavors. Phasos? Yes. You're a cartographer? Yes. What else do you do? Well, cartography is my, my, my primary business. I do have to travel a lot for that. And though I am able to handle myself, you know, uh, there are occasions where I get... Uh, into situations that uh, are more dangerous than I uh, um, would would be uh, comfortable just doing on my own. Um, you know, in this whole mapping journey, I, I uh, you know, wanted to make it to the Golden K and map it out. I wasn't going to do that on my own. Uh, as far as other ventures, uh, well, we'll see uh, when we get there how much you will uh, need to know. I see. It would very much depend on the details, Phezos. Yes, of course, of course, details are very important. I write very, very clear, concise, and, well, uh, appropriate contracts for each job that I may need you for. You will know what is important. You will know the details. I promise you that. We'll see. 
he is 100% steepling his fingers as per. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yes, no one evil has ever said anything like the sentence that he just said. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, completely he, on the up and up. He's going to, um, you know, stop steepling his fingers, kind of very uh, jankily, like, raise up his, his, his hand to very, you know, clasp it onto your shoulder, if you will, if you, if, if you allow it. And, he's, and he says, thank you, Lord Tilla, for listening. He, he kind of cuts eyes at uh, Tibbet for a moment. Uh, <laughs> before he uh, kind of goes back to him, himself. Uh, and he actually pulls out uh, a piece of paper and begins to write on it. Mm. Can t- I wish Tabeth would just mouth eat shit and die at phases. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she sticks a tongue out of him, but that was about it from that interaction. All right, there we go. That's the phase yeah, of pers- Lotilla. <laughs> all right, gotta make all my offers. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. I'm gonna uh, shift over to Tabeth, actually. Oh. Plus, y'all had discussions as well. I was thinking that Honeymoon would want to wait until, like, people were asleep. Gotcha. A similar question to earlier, so... Do you have family? Ocean Song? Yes, I do. Um, She's on a faraway port somewhere, still selling her jewelry and talking with all the locals, I imagine. Um... Not that there's anything wrong with settling down on a nice port town with not much to do, but, uh, you know, aside from her, uh, her tales of my father being in this dimension or that, whatever, I'm fine with just the sea. A little more than fine, I think. How do you mean? You would have to love it to risk your life. Yes, I mean, I've always felt a calling to it. There's something deeply alluring about it that I can't quite place my finger on. I think those are called sirens. Uh, well, yes, if you're talking about the physical manifestation while you're out at sea, yes, I've also (laughs) felt those. But no, no, this was something that would happen numerous times while I would be uh, on shore. I would have these dreams. Being out in the sea and having the ocean spray singe my face and being able to explore the horizons more than they were ever meant to be seen. But I never thought it was much of a reality until I was picked up by a crew and then tossed around like a heap of cargo. But I'm here now, you know. Had my fill of the sea and... Still ready to get right back at it. Hopefully, under new management, as it were. She, she can't blink, but she makes like a weird little head shake. Wait, go back. You were stolen? Huh? S- stolen? I suppose that would be the term for it. You um, just said picked up like cargo. It's about the same. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I worked upon a privateering ship uh, many years <laughs> ago. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, real quick. T- yeah, real quick. Your icons next to each other. Your names. It looks like Ocean Song Gatilla. 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 But yes, I, I, I did work on some privateering ships many, many years ago, and uh, upon one faithful trip, uh, we were boarded by the Blood Reavers, and. Uh, I guess I showed enough moxie to to be so welcomely, welcomingly led aboard and kept there against my will for 15 odd years. So yes, I guess stolen is the preferred term. I was where I wanted to be, I, I guess. Not exactly in the circumstance I imagined it, but on the sea nonetheless. I imagine my mother's still out there. I'm How sure she's doing fine. You? Hmm? How old are you? Of uh, somewhere late odd, thirty nine summers or so. You got picked up young. I started young. I wanted to leave that port as soon as I could. I was tired of the dreary old, same old, same old, melting metal into gems. But um, 
I guess it goes to show you careful what you wish for, huh? I was going to say she looks at the fire, but <laughs> she could just look at your hair. Yeah, uh, yeah about the same. <laughs> it's pr you probably just see the reflection in her eyes. Just, hmm. Yeah. It, it's... It's it's I appreciate the concern. It's it, it really shouldn't be a bother of the crew, you know, personal issues and all that. I mean, I guess I'm one to talk, and she glances over at Phasos Fe um, <laughs> about taking personal issues. But you know, we're here to see a job done, and I'm hoping to make it to the end of that to see the next adventure. Additional challenge accepted. <laughs> Did, did did she actually say this or <laughs> should you know what sure <laughs> uh, she the, to Beth blinks for a second goes a challenge okay yes <laughs> sure I mean I guess you could take this as this entire journey as a challenge the, the... it's already part of my contract <laughs> yes that's how contracts work until you burn them and then she again glances at her <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's busy goes, writing right now. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Like, she's not trying to get a rise out of Phasos. She's just like you know, signaling to Latilla that that's what she's talking about. Gotcha. Um, yes. Um, I mean, yours says to keep the safety of the crew, and you've done a pretty swell job of that so far. You've kept me alive and not drowned, dead. You've kept Honeymoon from becoming a pile of glass shards everywhere. And uh, Phasos is uh, still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound too disappointed. Uh, but look, I mean, Sean, Theodore, they're all fine. You're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> she like looks at Theo's hand. Hey, alive is different from unharmed. <laughs> Your contract said alive, so there we go. Better, <laughs> better his hand than his head. <laughs> Theodore, sure. Theodore waves his kind of gauzed nub around. Uh, it's all right. It's all right, Miss Lotilla. This wasn't I her had, fault. It could have been much I worse. Been... Yeah, honeymoon will actually say better his hand than his head. I heard they make <laughs> wonderful prosthetics in Belkinus. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that all aside from honeymoon's thing that she wanted to wait until everybody was asleep? Did you want me to go more into your stuff, Heather? Uh, sure. Yeah, if um, you want. Uh, just probably just a quick one then. Uh, I think I have siblings. If they're alive. If they're alive. I don't know. I haven't seen them in a while. Define a while. How, How much do you know about one tease? Shockingly, very little. Oh. That's fine. It's a bit oh, of a small. A it's a bit of a tight knit culture. I've heard they are a bit, um, secluded. Yes. I met a handful upon my vessels, but they mostly kept to themselves. In my particular case, I, I worked for a monastery. I was a guard. It's how I got my training. What winds up happening a good deal of the time is unwanted clutches are donated to monasteries. And they're assigned jobs. I don't know where they wound up. I see. Do you know your parents, at least? No. What Even made you leave the monastery? <laughs> it sounds like it was a great home for you. It worked. And I worked. I know and the feeling. It... <laughs> was it five years ago now? I would travel. I would do different guard missions for the uppers of the monastery. So I've been up and down this coast for a while. Not necessarily on ships, but up and down the coast. And at one point, I was left behind to make sure payment was secure and deliver it home. I wound up getting stuck in what I can only describe as a freak blizzard. On the coast? Going home. To the mountains. Oh, I see. And I met someone who would not leave me alone. Oh. She glances at Theodore for a second. 
he just kind of looks le left and right like he doesn't realize he he's the one being looked at at first he thinks you're looking at somebody else behind him <laughs> continue his name was chase and he was very good at it <laughs> ah. <laughs> so you were hunted by this chase we were married for three years holy shit oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I have a lot of experience with arranged marriages, uh, I'll have you know. I am very sorry. Yeah. It wasn't arranged, my friend. Oh. No, baby girl was I, it, into it. it. Immediately, <laughs> like, Tibeth does the, the that Shrek, like, uh, like, <laughs> like, like sucking in his face. <laughs> Honey, Honeymoon is also doing that, looking down at her star map. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like, my apologies, uh, you said Chase, and I, I, assume, <clears throat> I assumed it was, uh, uh, not <laughs> reciprocated. <clears throat> I'm sorry, out of all four of us, Lotilla's the one who gets the most. Yes. <laughs> it was warm. <laughs> it was a oh, blizzard. What? Originally, what? it was just that. <laughs> to, to Beth, again, just like... <laughs> Trying to keep everything together. Theodore, Theodore <laughs> turns himself and starts to scoot. I'm uh, going to go uh, to bed over here now. <laughs> honeyman, honeyman, has been, honeyman has been writing the same line for the last minute and a half. She's trying not to, to laugh. To Beth is about glowing the same as the fire at this point. It's becoming indistinguishable. At this point, Yo, even Bezos fucks. has gotten, uh, you know... <laughs> His his his, his uh, curiosity peaked as he's put down his pen and is just listening. He's honeymoon now. space. Sharn, <laughs> yeah. Sharn does. He's the, like, like still staring at the paper, but like he's not moving his hand or anything. He's just listening. Mm -hmm. Sharn, yeah. Sharn does the like uh, Obama not bad face. Like <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> she like puts out a hand to uh, to Beth's shoulder and just it was he was a kind man. It wasn't it wasn't nefarious. Uh, I'm glad because all the situation that you've been describing up to this point made it seem that that was the case. I apologize. Um, it was meant as a joke. The chase bit. I, I see. I, did... I understand it doesn't Cult always cultural, come Cultural uh, divide there for a second. It's, it's... my apologies. Oh. Continue with uh, your, your arranged, or not arranged, so, excuse me, your, your marriage in the blizzard. <laughs> Obviously we didn't get married then. It's so funny now. <laughs> yes. Ugh. The rocks the rocks married us. Yeah. I trust them. <laughs> and so every time there was a mission that would send me that way, he would find me. I see. So did he continue living out there while you were married? Yes. And you were relegated to guard duty with your plan. I imagine he wasn't also a 1T, was he? No. Human. I see. I think I'm starting to piece together where the schism between you and your clan started to arise. <laughs> yeah, Honeymoon's not, like, technically part of the conversation, but she wants so bad to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> If if honeymoon even so much as it like squeaks at something, Tibeth is going to like shoot a glance back. Nope. Like, no, shut, shut no, up. Honey, no, honeymoon knows how to play her cards. She's waiting for you to ask all the questions. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so um, what exactly happened then? They found out. And what happened to him? Gone. Ooh. Gone, gone? There was nobody. Then no. there's still a chance? No. She has, like, the, the most awkward smile she can muster. It gets a very plain no. Oh. You can see Phazos uh, has, at that point, uh, upon hearing that, picked up his pen, and he kind of very hesitantly starts to write again. I see. Well... Then what did they do with you? Did they kick you out, or did you leave? 
I left. Good. I assume this entire voyage for you has been a means to an end in some kind of way. What do you mean? This wasn't... I mean, this was two years ago, Ocean Song. Two years is plenty of time to hold a grudge. Oh, I do. And that's what I mean. With this ah. trip... Um... I mean, the Golden K. The treasure. The 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 untold fortunes that are there. You could that's not why I'm here, Ocean Song. A small... Um, okay. Then... Why? I had... Eggs. Oh. Wait. How is even chokes? Very quickly, one. very quickly clears her throat, looks away. <laughs> Tabeth is doing is is doing her best not to look at Honeymoon during that, and she's like, <laughs> "What? How does?" Okay. Continue. <laughs> Holy shit, Lotilla's a MILF! <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up! I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god. It's the live Just... fan dub version of the Golden K. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, had, past tense, question mark? Either they were destroyed with my husband or taken. So you're hoping for the latter? I don't know. So if not to raise a small army to strike back at your home monastery, then why be on this daring adventure for untold riches? Is it just a distraction? I recently had something done to where I was in need of funds, but additionally... They didn't make it seem like anybody really came back. And I don't really have a lot to go back for. So the loan sharks after you? After all they did to you? Ocean Song, I think you took my words in a different direction. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> if I survive, great. If I don't, also great. Ah. Uh. Oh, I see. And she's like <laughs> looking over a chart, like, help me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just meant I wasn't really. Riches wasn't you exactly. You what weren't expecting me. to. Or rather, whether or not this entire adventure was successful was no matter to you. No. I see. Well, I guess. Fortunately, uh, for you, the rest of us are very much keen on completing this adventure. Or, unfortunately, I guess. Uh, depending on your perspective of things. Um, but, uh... I just like uh, to keep busy. Then... Please don't worry. I will complete the contract. I think best ending, Lotilla stays retires here and becomes snake mom snom to the spider. <laughs> we'll see. It, I, quite the conundrum you've dropped on my lap, I'll say, Latilla. You've done a bang up job of shutting me up several times. <laughs> and I only know of one other person that's capable of that. Um, and then she, like, thinks for a moment, like, she looks over to the fire and thinks for a moment. So, if a distraction's all you need, then why not stick with this company? These privateers. I do like the adventure. Then you and I are of the same heart at the very least. <laughs> you get a smile. Aww. Aww. You mean a snile? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no. Her smiles go for snails and snails and snails. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, she offers her hand and says, "Friends of the ocean." Friends <laughs> of the ocean, and she uh, takes your hand. It is probably the weirdest combination of sensations for both of them. Well, One probably. being s scaly, and the other being like essentially warm coal. Nice. All right. Um, 
And yeah. Uh, and then, then she's going to go back and to, to looking at the fire and just kind of thinking on all of that. At this point as well, the two NPCs have kind of fallen asleep during the uh, conversation. So they are at rest now. I mean, gonna... finally stops rewriting on the same line. Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, Tiveth is going to look over at uh, Honeymoon and Phazos and goes, Well, I trust one of you will look after us, right? Yes, um, Honeymoon kind of casts a glance over her shoulder at Phazos and says, I'm sure we can handle the first watch. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, he did right. not look up from his paper. <laughs> Rise me whenever you need to exchange shifts. And Will then Sabeth is going to flip around and then just conk out in the dirt. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's Latilla doing? I think Latilla... If y'all wouldn't mind scooting back, I think she's actually going to curl up around the fire. Oh. Yeah. No, mm. Yeah. Just gently nudges Shar <laughs> and just... <laughs> slithers around <laughs> she, she, she like kind of air swats a few <laughs> of whiskey I didn't drink it all or you're fine Sean you're fine yeah. um, do you know the master teeth chief death pose Joseph? oh yeah with the like That's a... with the face on the ground and like the two hands like 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 the, it's the it's good pose like in football yeah that yeah. is Exactly how Tibeth sleeps. Amazing. Oh. <laughs> she even spins uh -huh. on the ground like Master Chief when she. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was the whole point. Whenever yeah. she was like sitting there, she like flipped over and like <laughs> <laughs> on the ground. Would you be able to like find a picture of that? I don't oh know yeah, what yeah. About. you can do 100%. that. Here, I love in in Halo One like as well. Like because they didn't have yeah. like ragdoll physics. Every time, like if you die in a standing position, it would do like a little <laughs> turn before it yep. falls like that, that as good. well. Uh, good. Here's for those who don't. Uh, oh, I don't have a screen capture. Whatever. Oh well. You can look it up at home. Okay. So we're asleep, and Phasos and Honeymoon may begin. Yeah. Time. So you're gonna take yes. the first watch, but you said that you were gonna have an interaction first. Yeah. So I feel like it's happening concurrent. Um, okay. With the watch. So Honeymoon has gotten up again. She's since t some time has passed. She's making new notes about. Uh, how the sky is looking and how the stars have sort of moved, uh, if they have at all. Uh, yes. So the sky moves very similarly to the sky, you know, back at home, north and, you know, the cardinal directions seem correct from what you can tell, you know, sun rising in the east, setting in the west. Same thing with the stars moving together. The clouds seem to move in a proper rotation. Like I said, this place seems like it was built off of a blueprint of the world that you came from. Perhaps that might mean that it was based off of the real world or someone who made it is familiar with the real world. It's hard to tell. <laughs> Regardless, it makes charting this place a lot easier than one would expect being in a completely different dimension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very intriguing. Um, so yeah, as Honeymoon is sort of... She, she walks around a bit, kind of alternating between keeping an eye on the perimeter and then going back to her her map making um but as she like you know wanders back with an earshot of Phaso, she keeps her voice low so she doesn't wake anyone um oh actually i totally forgot that i have fucking nighttime i could just do this there we go <gasps> oh! Oh! Magic. Nice. i totally wow. missed i totally forgot that i had a nighttime version of this map i should have uh, used it wow. by the way this is by um afternoon maps i think it's called after yeah afternoon maps i i am a patron nice. of theirs on patreon mm -hmm. uh -huh. very nice. nice do we perchance have any any music or ambiance we do not you can pick some if you so wish Oh, okay. Let me... And I'll be sure to add it to the VOD as well, because I did not plan to have ambience mm. for nighttime. Some campfire mm -hmm. ambience. Okay, I've I've got maybe a good one. Uh, good, you just a track your... that enjoy. It could be good. Mm -hmm. um... Get like a Yule log from YouTube <laughs> or whatever, like the ten yeah. hour one. ten hour Yule log. There you go. Yep. Yeah, Phasos plops a, a piece of wood in the fire, makes the 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 loop Crackle. start over again. <laughs> so, um. As Honeymoon wanders back, sort of looking up at the pretty expansive night sky and the stars and stuff, um, while she's just sort of, 
I feel like she she's made her way to the bank of the river, so like it's just kind of like the water's up to like her ankles thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Um and she'll kind of without looking back at Phazos, she'll she'll call over quietly enough that he can hear, but not enough to to wake them, the rest of them. Okay. Um, oh try, sorry, I'm trying to think of what exactly she would say. Um She'll first she'll just say Mr. Jerame. Just to sort of get your attention. Uh, he, you, you hear him like, you know, click his his charcoal as he has. That's the only writing implement on the the paper a couple of times. Langley. Why he did you come? Oh. She's still just kind of head tilted back up at the stars. She says, "Why did you come on this expedition? Surely there are other ways." Of, or well, I know you say it's for map making, but surely there's more than that. He kind of looks uh, over at you, picks up uh, the papers that he has, and kind of uh, rolls them up a little bit, walks over, and takes a seat next to you. She kind of raises an eyebrow, and then will also uh, kneel down in the in the grass. You're right. But perhaps there is some other reason I may have come here. Mapping mm. the Golden Caves, of course. Quite an achievement, one that, uh, as I understand, you have been wanting to do for a while yourself. Oh, yes. Although it, go it goes a bit deeper than just making the map. He, he kind of glances up at the stars. I imagine so. A family thing, you said. I was maybe a little bit over, uh, mm -hmm. overhearing. Oh, quite all right. We were all around the campfire. Hard to avoid. Goodness knows I was listening in on Tibeth and Lotilla's conversation. He gives a very deep sigh. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, uh, kind of shifting her gaze down to the reflection of stars in the river, Honeymoon will continue. My family have been stellar map makers for many generations, but it's not just for the fun of it. You see, my, my, my druidic circle that I follow and practice, we seek the knowledge of the cosmos itself and the power that that can bring. And she, she kind of like holds her hand out, like sort of making the, the motion with her claws as she looks back up. Map making is just the way that the best way that we found to do it, hmm. and of course the map making itself. I quite enjoy it. I like the detail work and the the research of it all. But at the end of the day, that knowledge, that power, it calls to me. And she kind of glances over at him, and she says, "As I imagine it may to you." He, he kind of uh, gives a, 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 a small nod. I've realized a little bit over the course of our extended time knowing each other that perhaps we're not so different, you and I. He kind of uh, looks off into the distance. I did come to the cave to map it. And then I intended to perhaps map a way to it to return as many times as I needed, though... The magical realm shifting and whatnot kind of puts a wrench into that equation. Oh, yes. Things get quite confusing when you're on a different plane. Yes. Did you notice, she points up at the at the stars, uh, did you notice they're not quite like ours, but it's almost as if somebody modeled them after our sky. They're almost there, but they're just not quite right. I don't quite have the, the same eye for the stars as you did, as you do, that is, but... I will say it has a striking familiarity, if just a bit off. Oh, yes. Hmm. But yes, power, you mention. <laughs> <laughs> I do seek power of a sort. Power that I believe the wealth of the K can provide, or at least get me closer to getting. Mm. You see... I believe that everyone in this world has a place. I intend to be at the top and 
Currently, my work with the Cartographer's Guild, while lucrative, isn't getting me there. I need more. And that's why... He kind of pulls out the piece of paper he's been working on. I've worked up this. If you would be so interested to take a look. He Honeymoon. hands it over to Honeymoon. Honeymoon arches an eyebrow and takes it, scans over it. In a... Uh, yes, uh, he, he, so you can see it is a it is a, a form of contract. Oh. Um, and he says, in our journeys, and uh, especially these last this last day, I've realized that I alone cannot uh, achieve my goals. You may have noticed I approached Tibeth and Lotilla. Yes, it went quite swimmingly. <laughs> uh, Tibeth not so much, but Lotilla <laughs> seems at least possible. Though, from overhearing their conversation, maybe it's not a line of work, really. Uh, he kind of uh, looks over. Originally, I had thought, well, what if I could finagle something here? You know, you're making these star maps. Uh, what if I became sole publisher? That could definitely make something that was, uh, you know, uh, not quite my, my expertise, something that I could uh, profit off of. But from our conversation now, seeing that perhaps that contract could be amended. Honeymoon side-eyes him and says, What did you have in mind? Perhaps a type of partnership could be arranged. Honeymoon starts to get kind of a slow smile. I must admit that I never thought it would come to this. I always looked down on your uh, star mapping and whatnot, but I realize, and I do know that I am a bigger person for this, I realize that I am mistaken, <laughs> and that perhaps there Honeymoon is... Honeymoon laughs. Some amount, some very <laughs> small amount of oh. uh, <laughs> value some. to your work. And <laughs> hearing your ambitions, they do align well with my own. Hmm. Honeymoon finishes, you know, like she, she kind of like covered her mouth with a hand to giggle very demurely uh, and kind of finishes chuckling, uh, still holding the con the contract she looks back out over the river um and she says you know as much as i like to needle and poke fun at your own methods there's a reason i consider you my rival that would take somebody i consider of equal prowess and she she looks up and she says my family's fatal flaw was that they never they always insisted that it was their duty alone to uncover the secrets of the cosmos by mapping it. And then now most of them are dead. And she she pauses and says, I like to think I'm smarter than them. And I like to think I'm a bit more ambitious too. And she now like she had been kind of like looking up at the at the sky and the river most of the time, but now she she looks over at Phazos directly and she says, "I think partners might be nice." You can see Phazos smiles at this, a genuine smile, <gasps> mm -hmm. and he 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 then quickly changes from that genuine smile <laughs> to a very very. <laughs> Oh yes, things are all falling into place kind of <laughs> smile as he steeples his fingers. Oh, there you go with the finger thing again. You always do that, you know? <laughs> he, he looks down, he unsteeples for a moment, <laughs> straightens his back, re-steeples. Yes, yep. I do. <laughs> <laughs> he, he holds out a hand. Honeymoon, would you like to be my partner? Honeymoon looks a little bit surprised that he's actually calling her by her first name uh and then she also like still still like a bit coy but also kind of genuine smile back and she daintily takes your hand and shakes it and she says phasers i think i shall very good <sighs> very good indeed 
the both of you get an inspiration for that. All right. Yes. Oh, and Fuck yeah. uh, as I imagine, we're uh, getting ready to stand up. Honeymoon says, oh, I did notice something. She digs around uh, in her bag and holds out a, a nice pen. And she says, <gasps> I noticed you were having some trouble. He, he, he looks at it. He smiles, Langley. takes it, says, Langley, thank you. This will make things a lot better. He goes, he quickly uh, uh, goes and starts rewriting the contract in pen. <laughs> <laughs> Except, of course, with the new partnership agreement as opposed to the... Uh, original wording? The original wording. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that's a good, like, scene end for yeah, that Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Pog will, in the chat. I didn't have the I didn't have the time to make this a proper map, um, but I'll share the proper one. Uh, mm. Honeymoon, you ah. have an additional information about th the stars and ah. how it relates to the Golden K. There is a particular set of very bright stars in the sky that make a constellation that somewhat resemble the the K based on what Phazos has drawn, and it looks like this. Ooh. As none of those major stars seem to go outside kind of the outline of the K in terms of orientation, besides the fact that they eventually kind of, you know, rotate with the rotation of the planet as well. Yeah. At, you know, a certain point, you know, at the dead of night, it seems to align very closely with the shape of the K. Ooh. Mm. Honeymoon will remember that. Important information. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note quickly. Yes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give you the screenshot of that, like a proper drawn one, not drawn in Roll20 as well. Got gotcha. Much appreciated. Okay. Ooh. If that is the last thing you do in the night, I think so. We may roll into the day. You all finish yeah. a will, long just, rest. Just real quick, mm -hmm. uh, just for flavor. Honeymoon going to bed is a very intensive process because she has so many fucking things to take off. <laughs> like, she has to take all the fucking rings, the fucking boob jewels, the horn caps, the jewels between the horn caps, all her earrings. <laughs> it's a fucking process. So, yeah. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me get some perception checks because you are on watch. Ooh. Yeah, forgot oh, yes. we were on watch. Yes. Too... <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hey, go. let's go. Oh. Okay, so, Phazos, cool. uh, you notice the night is pretty much kind of nice and pleasant and, you know, not much to worry about. Honeymoon, you notice mostly the same. However, you hear the far-off chirps of animals and creatures that you've started to become familiar with as your time on the island has, you know, started to go on. They, they are chirps that you've heard, not from your world, but from the island. They sound a bit panicked. Hmm. But otherwise, an uneventful watch on your part. Honeymoon will let Phazos know that she's heard this, and that she had, like she's she'll keep an ear out for the rest of the watch. But if nothing happens, she'll like she'll let whoever takes the next one know that she heard that, and just to be like aware. Hmm. Keeping an ear an ear out, you do hear rustling nearby in some of the <gasps> kind of bushes and branches, and you can see that all the masked creatures all seem to be in a state of stasis of some kind. Their lights are very dim, almost like a slumber of their own. Honeymoon will not instigate anything. She's gonna, she's gonna wait. She's gonna keep waiting and listening, see if anything jumps out, and you know, when her, when the watch is up, she'll let whoever's next know. You're so good at listening that when you, like, pay attention, <laughs> you, you notice that there is a pattern where, you know, when you actively pay attention, like, even just the subtlest of movements of you, like, perking your ears or, like, looking up or anything like that, the rustling seems to stop as if they know they're being watched by you, whatever's out there. Uh, yeah, Honeymoon will, yeah, just just at some point during the watch as she's noticing this, just kind of say quietly to, to Phazos, I believe the Guardian is still keeping its eye on us. He kind of nods. I would imagine so. Yeah, and uh... Yeah, if, if it doesn't do anything, Honeymoon's not gonna start shit. Yeah, it so. doesn't really do anything. You just kind of... Okay. You get the feeling that you are definitely being watched. And it Great. knows that you're watching it back. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
We should probably let the others know when we wake them. Agreed. Yeah, Honeyman will meander back to the fire and just she'll she'll kind of use Lotilla's tail as a pillow. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so I guess then, nice and cool. Uh, Tabeth is next up then. Uh, if you so Honeymoon. wish to be the next on watch. Very well, well, I mean, if Honeymoon's gonna go rest on Latilla's tail, <laughs> someone should be awake. <laughs> you could wake one of the NPCs, or I don't know the mass creatures. True. Yeah, I, uh, I assume well, this was like a couple hours watch. later. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, a couple hours later. Yeah, I, I'll say uh, maybe we can wake up both Tibeth and Sharn, so there's a, mm -hmm. a another two-person watch. You could, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Right. Okay, you wake up Sharn and Tibeth, and she, Sharn has a slight startle. Just goes, oh, you know, part uh, of me was hoping that this was all a dream. Unfortunately, not. Uh, your, your uh, watch. Uh, just keep an eye out. There is something in the woods watching us. Hmm. So does Faisal go to the... wake up Sharn and Honeymoon come oh, yeah. go to wake yeah, up Tibeth? I'll, yeah, I'll wake up Tibeth. Yeah, Faisal knows Tibeth does not like him, so. <laughs> Yeah, Honeymoon will, will just kind of gently shake your stroller to, to wake you and be like, Tibeth, darling, it's time for a watch. <laughs> oh, yes, right. I forgot. Yes, um, Still and needs just... to be seen. Yes, um, and just keep an eye out. Um, there's something in the woods that's watching us. I suspect it's this guardian creature, but just in case. Something beware. other than the little ones around us? Yes. And she's gonna take note of the them being like in stasis, like you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, okay, I'll do my best to keep my eye out then. Mm -hmm. You go yep. have your rest. Indeed, honeymoon begins the laborious process of deglamming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you may, with that information, very pertinent information, you may roll perception with advantage. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to roll for Sharn as well. Huh. Well, uh -huh, shit. 11's better than 7. <laughs> yeah. Strictly speaking. All right. So Sharn rolled a 13. All right. And uh, listening out, you don't quite get the same feeling that Honeymoon was talking about, although you are looking out for it. It's not like you're ignorant of the possibility. It's not like, oh, well, I don't hear anything. Must have been my imagination. Uh, Must have been the wind. <laughs> There's a nip in the air. It won't be good for my crops. Uh, but you don't hear anything. You don't see anything of note. Sharn kind of crosses her arms. She seems suspicious of the silence herself. Well, whatever it is, maybe it's gone and looked for something else. Or it's gotten better at being secret. That, or perhaps we're worse at looking at the jungle. <laughs> I mean, you and I are both used to the sea, aren't we not? She kind of holds up one finger like she's about to say something defensive, and then she tilts her head. Hi, fair. <laughs> <laughs> and they go about their watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mostly uneventful. Okay. Right. Um, I guess last up is a yeah. Yeah, Tabeth is gonna go wake up Latilla. Sharn kind of uh, gestures to you a little bit. Should I wake up the boy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I would let you. I would allow you to do that. Uh, I wouldn't want to take that uh, surprise away from him. I perhaps <laughs> it could be some uh, experience under his belt. And um, yep, she sh so... she shakes him awake, and he does kind of like a karate pose. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Oh, the best. Boy. It's just oh, it's just you, Miss Sharn. And she kind of gives him the rundown, and kind of goes back to laying in her spot. Um, to Beth. Walks up to Latilla, notices that Honeymoon is on her tail, and goes, It's a big tail! She's got this room. I just need to not jerk up. It, it, she, like, goes in to, like, shake, and then she notices that she's, like, she kind of, like, gets down on Latilla's level and just, like, pats her on the shoulder. It's like, it's, uh, it's your turn for a watch, but you do mm -hmm. have a guest on your tail currently. Also, there's apparently some noise about in the jungle. That you should be aware of. Um, supposedly, it's the guardian of the island still keeping watch of us. Uh, you can hear it if you're careful enough, but me and Sean weren't. Supposedly, Honeymoon and Phasos were, though. So, just keep an ear out and uh, make sure you don't rise uh, Honeymoon back there. Alright. 
I like to think she, that Honeymoon is a comically deep sleeper, so no matter what you do, she'll just, she'll, she's not gonna wake up. Okay. <laughs> she just, like, uncoils a little bit. Uh, Honeymoon gets to keep the part of the tail she is on. Yay. And she just stretches up kind of higher than usual. Theodore just kind of shuffles over to get nearby. You can see that he was a little bit perturbed by realizing how far he is from the rest of the party. Uh, you can hear her spine crack. Yeah. With uh, with them being fully roused, Tabeth is going back into Mr. Haloman death pose and <laughs> on the ground. This is just the way that she sleeps. That's how she <laughs> sleeps. Mm -hmm. I'm, I sleep myself very similar to that. Not ah. exact, but very similar. <laughs> good right. morning, Theo. Uh, good morning, Miss Lotilla. Uh, you don't think that uh, Guardian fella is gonna smite us? Why? Well, we did come to this island to kind of... He leans in with a uh, hand over his mouth. Steal their treasure. <laughs> but I mean, learning about all that, I kind of don't want to anymore. Even before learning that, I was totally fine and content with just leaving the island and going back to my folks. I feel like it's based more on actions than intentions. As oh. we've done nothing yet, there's oh. no real reason to smite us. Oh, I sure said. hope so. <sighs> It'll be okay, Theo. Alright, because I don't think I want to lose any more fingers. That's fair. <laughs> that, you may roll perception yeah. with advantage as well. Alright. I don't think I have any. Do I have, some? I have a little bit. Perception. Theo is gonna 14. roll like garbage. Well, oh. yeah, Tilly got a 14. Okay, with a 14, you hear the rustling kind of in the tree line that uh, you were warned about, and mm -hmm. you see a little creature peeking out from it, different well, from the mass ones. Oh? Well, you can see that it's a, okay. about. It looks like a chicken without its head. However, wherever the head would have cut out seems to be rows of teeth. And it seems to be Holy crouching shit. there, watching you. Uh, uh, dinner? You are on honeymoon since you are on me. Uh -huh. You actually do get, like, roused by your shoulders and held for a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's going on? Don't say anything. I need mm -hmm. you to look where I'm looking. Honeymoon... It starts to be like, huh? And then realizes you said don't talk. And she gets her wits about her, looks where you're looking and says, or rather mouths. Ooh. <laughs> and you can see the Theodore like notices where you're looking and looks to, and he's just like, Hoo! he just like grabs you, like wraps both his arms around your big snussily <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> uh, Miss Lotilla, what is that? I don't know. Does it look like anything we might have seen back on the material plane? What? Chicken with what teeth. is your... Hmm. History? Yeah, you can... What's your history score? Uh, plus three. Okay, Lotilla, you got a history score? I don't think so. What is it? Uh, just a one. Just a one? Okay, with a three, Honeymoon... You actually do know that this thing is familiar. It is something that has been in kind of certain, um, what's the word? Like, uh, zoo, what's, mo Zoos? uh, the books that contain creatures in them. Bestiaries? Bestiaries. Nice. You've seen these in certain bestiaries in the material plane. They're called mm -hmm. wretch, wretched. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> what a fun and beautiful name. Pog. However, you do uh, you do know that these things tend to run in packs. Where there is one, there's likely a bunch of others. Uh, Honeymoon will uh, whisper to Lotilla. I recognize it from um, it's. You can find them on the material plane. They're called wretched. And there's, if there's one, there's probably more of them. Oh, good. You can see that it's just staring at you and the fire, and with your high perception, you can see it's shaking. Hmm. Scared of the... F <laughs> um, well, maybe if we keep the fire going, it'll be too scared to come close. We can deal with it in the morning. Is that your plan? That's what Honeymoon thinks. 
Scared of the fire? Yeah, it's like looking at the fire, it's shaking. What if it's cold? <laughs> that's not in character, that's that's me. I mean... <laughs> I mean... Pax. I don't like the sound of Pax, Honeymoon. No, neither do I. Okay. I know that it looks violent. Does it, the book, did the book say it was violent? Do I recall anything like that? Yes, they are predator hunters, you know, similar to wolves, where, um, you know, if they are hungry, they will hunt. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Honeyman relays that. I kind of want to warn the little creatures. The masked ones. Ugh. Very well. I, I suppose out of character we didn't fully get the long rest. Hmm. Depends what you do for the rest of the night. Or gotcha. morning in this case. Yeah, Honeymoon, given how it's acting with the fire, and it, it doesn't seem like it's trying to come closer, does it? It does. It seems oh, whenever it you're not moving, it seems to creep ever so closer. Okay. Any sudden movements you make make it kind of a little bit startled and pause in its walking. I am adding more sticks to the fire. <sighs> Honeymoon okay. will uh, cast Produce Flame and hold it in her hand and kind of like... She's not going to, like, throw it yet, but she's going to kind of, like, thrust her hand at it with the flame, see if it flinches. It does from... for a moment until after, if you keep your hand out, it, again, starts to creep a little bit closer, similar to the campfire. Hmm. Honey, honeymoon mutters under breath, oh, you little bitch. She puts out the, <laughs> puts out the fire. Um... Um, at, at adding more sticks to the mm. fire as well, you can see that um, the light produces showing oh, you more of go. them kind of creeping out of the tree line. Oh, God. Theo, I need you to take one arm off of me and tap to Beth. All right. And he does so, kind of like shakily poking to Beth awake. Ugh, what? It's morning already. I just, I just Don't fell move. back asleep. What? Well, we might be. Well, breakfast might be served. Oh, is it? And she flips up and she looks around. Oh, it's us. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, um. Poke Sean. Or alternatively, we cause a, quite a bit of ruckus and get everybody ready to um attack. I would like people to be awake and aware first. Okay, I will do that then. Uh, and she uh, pokes at Sharn. Yep, Sharn kind of groggily wakes up as well and looks around. Hello, partner. Apparently, we are surrounded. I. Um, could you wake up, Phasos? I. She <laughs> just takes one hand, like without moving her head away from looking at the wretched, takes one hand, shakes Phasos. And now everyone is awake. Out of character. Is, oh, sorry, I was muted. Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> as, as, I was saying something. Um, I was going to say, as as you woke me, Phazos, like, 90 degree uh, sits up and then steeples <laughs> his fingers as he's uh, waking up, looks around, unsteeples, and gets fisticuffs ready. <laughs> um, uh. To Beth. Uh, leans around from like looking at or waking up Sharn and looking at Phasos. Uh, she's going to tap the little critter next to her awake as well. So, nice friend. Um, that appears to be some unsavory types in your neighborhood here. You tap it, and the glow kind of comes back to it. It looks around, almost completely unfazed. Oh, my apologies. I guess they don't eat wood. Go back to sleep, I guess. Its light dims and goes back to its kind of motionless form. Oh, good. Well, friends, it's just looking for us. <laughs> Do we know um, and... for a fact they're hostile? Well, they keep getting closer. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, mean, if they were super cuddly, friendly monsters, you, of course, wouldn't first attack, would you? Oh, Phazos with your tentacle arm there. He kind of looks over. He's just like, I am unthreatened currently. Oh. Well, then why don't we let them get a little bit closer? I mean, 
Honeymoon is like down to let them get close to you melee folks, see what they do, as mm-hmm. long as they don't get near her. Yeah, yeah Honey, yeah, Honeymoon sa- uh, j- very like very quietly says, <laughs> they haven't rushed us yet, and I'm fairly confident we could hold them off. They they're about the they look like fucked up chickens. Honestly, I think we could handle them. Um, I I I suppose we could let them try to see what they want. Phasos is going to stand up to his full height, and he's going to look at the them. You can see that, as you do, it's very easy to see that they're all shaking, very similarly to the first one that you saw, and they do take a few steps back at you, showing your full height. Mm-hmm. To Beth, okay. um, we'll grab some... She'll... Hmm. The moss, more moss junkies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? She'll grab, she'll grab some grass and mosses, stuff like that, and uh, try to use some mud to cake her the end of her dart with, um, with debris, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to do produce flame and try to light it. Oh! And then swing it around a bit. You swing it around, they seem entranced by it. Mm. Mm. Well, I don't sure if they're interested in the fire or just mesmerized by it, but um, maybe I could just do this for a bit and they go away. <laughs> uh, is it particularly sorry, is it particularly cold outside? It, the side of you away from the fire? Yes. Mm. There are, there might actually be it cold. is a wet jungle, very humid, very easy to get cold away from a, mm. such a fire. Mm-mm. Honeymoon thinks the island spirit would probably be mad if we killed them and didn't eat them, and Honeymoon wouldn't want to eat them because they look fucking gross, so probably <coughs> not good to kill them. So she will whisper, maybe we sort of all shift to one side of the fire, let them and warm themselves the on the other? Okay. Sharn yeah, nods at rushed. this, but she has a hand kind of in her coat. I, if one darts for me, I'm shooting. No, go crazy. <laughs> I'm at swinging. that point, it's self-defense. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. And then we would be no different than the boar. Exactly. By the logic of the, the, the you know, whatever guardian, I mean, we didn't attack them first. How yeah. could we be evil if we're, you know, following these rules? Hmm? <laughs> And as you move to that one side, they all start to creep closer and closer to the campfire, but kind of keeping their gross, headless chicken neck faces (laughs) fixated on you as if they're watching you in the same intensity that you watch them. Mm. And they get close (laughs) to the edge of the fire and they all seem to lay down and their shaking stops. Oh, thank okay. God, we can Would go back to sleep. Right. Honey, as soon as she sees that they've laid down, Honeymoon immediately plops back down <laughs> on Latilla's tail and is like, all right, good night. And this Come one this one up here, Open you see that it, it sees the, the wooden masked creature. It, like, nibbles a little bit on the wood, <laughs> and then it, like, almost like a sneezy bark, just like, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Just that lightly, was a very good noise you just made. Just kind of <laughs> lightly kicks it with its one, like one of its legs, yeah. and it just kind of oh, like geez. turns it a little bit. <laughs> be nice to him. <sighs> Wake me up if there's something actually dangerous. Mm. Honeyman is already unconscious again. <laughs> Phasos is back to sleeping. Yeah, congratulations! You've you've beaten the encounter. We solved your <gasps> fucked up chicken puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, Tibet and you do is still very wary, but she she extinguishes her rope dart and uh, begrudgingly resumes the Halo Man death pose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she would like a pillow as well. <laughs> the rest of the morning goes off without a hitch, as um, uh, Lotilla. Wait, no. Uh, t- is it Tibet? It was no, Latilla and Theodore Lot- the last watch. Latilla and yeah. Theodore both watch, making sure that the wretcheds don't do anything suspicious, and they all seem to fall asleep themselves as well as the morning passes and the early morning sun comes over the horizon. You all complete a long rest. You may get half of your 
uh, hit oh. dice back. Yay. Yay. And all class features that would reset on a long rest do so. Yay. Yay. However, okay. morning when morning comes, oh, no. suddenly the wretcheds all seem to notice something kind of out of your ability to parse. And they all like quickly get up and run back into the woods as if they were panicked. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Should um, we switch to the day map? Uh, we will soon. Oh, sorry. Just uh -oh. Uh, okay. I, I, and uh, let me just pause this music. Yeah, kind of, kind of hoping that, because like we we gotta go find the captain to get his fucking books, otherwise we're not getting off this island. I hope to God he's in the evil forest, because <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. Morning comes. The wretcheds run from some kind of unknown force. And as everyone's starting to wake up, they notice that. But then you hear a low rumbling. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly all the masked creatures get up. They all light up and they all kind of start to move almost in like a panic. Like they seem as though they've lost all coordination. They're trying to grasp for the trees, but some of them have lost the ability to climb. Some of them bump into each other. Some of them trip into the river. And then suddenly the earth begins to quake. Uh -oh. Oh, oh Honeymoon God. quickly starts putting all her stuff back on. And as it does, <laughs> the earth begins to quake, and, you know, your party members start to panic a little bit, and right oh, before dear. your eyes, a chunk oh, of no. the island starts to sink. Whoa, oh, hey, hey. Oh, God. Oh, come on, bruh. Bruh. Let him play, oh. ref. Come and on. And then, as it does, some of the mass figures that were there fall in with it. Uh, Some of them are clutching on the side, hanging for dear life. Oh my god! Uh, Tibeth is going to run and help the ones yep. that are clutching and on the side. Oh god. So, so is Theodore, and the earth is still quaking, and at this, Sharn just looks at you, at, at the two of you, and is like, what are you doing? This, this place could fall apart! We've got to get going! You see, Not without stab, these little ones. Stab her uh, tridents into the ground and wrap around Theo. Her tail wraps around Theo. Mm, yep, and Theo uh. is holding on as well. He looks very, very scared, but he's cl clutching onto this guy. So you guys have another decision. Ah. Uh, you oh, guys no. can escape and ensure your safety as well as everybody who runs with you, or you could stay here and try to help the creatures that are about to fall into this abyss. Uh, I mean, uh, this feels like a test, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Not necessarily. Uh, Phasos is going to, to uh, kind of like quickly assess the situation he, and uh, he looks over at everyone. Uh, she's right, we have to get out of here. You said Don't earlier listen. that, that the, the Island might be destroyed if someone takes the treasure, I. Yes. That it could be damaged. That's what I remember. Uh, Damage. Whoa. Tail. Oh. <laughs> nice. That was me. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, this looks like damage to me. Then that means that maybe someone made it to the treasure room. Rackmon. Exactly. Listen. I know that you guys have some sort of sentimental connection to those, but we have to get out of here. I... Then you can go and I will rescue these. You'd risk your life for uh, something that you can't even communicate with? What's the point of that? Sometimes you can do more than communicate with words, Phasos. Ooh. Yeah, Honeymoon, she is, yeah, glancing, like... Like, eyes quickly darting back and forth between, like, the gaping abyss now. Does it just look like, like, pitch black from down there? Pretty much. Right. Like, it okay. looks deep and dark, and you don't know where the bottom is. You see some water rushing in from the river, and some of it kind of, like, coming from the, the like, underground water. But it's hard to see an end. Yeah. Uh, Honeymoon. Uh, honeymoon will start... We'll, we'll grab these two guys, like, have one under each arm, and she'll call out to, to Beth. Look, it's admirable that you want to save all of them, but sometimes it's not feasible if you want to stay alive, too. 
Save who you can and keep moving. And she, I know I can save this one. Right. Well, you better make it be fucking quick about it as she grabs these two and starts fucking booking it. Okay. Are you are you booking it in heels also? Question mark? <laughs> of course I am. Oh, yeah, good. Just want to make sure that those were also put on during of course, your mad dash. Of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to come to a decision. It seems pretty split. So uh, I'm going to go down the line on what decision is made. Um, because although, yes, you can guarantee to save the ones that are still on the surface, it is going to be a challenge to save the ones that are not. And, um, however, if it is split, then I'm going to flip a coin. So, we're going to go down the line. Honeymoon, leave or stay? Leave. Thazos? Leave. Lotilla? Leave as in we're just dropping everything, or...? Leave as in you are prioritizing your safety over the safety of the ones that are at risk of falling. I Namely, can't... the little dudes. I... It's dependent on Theo and Tabeth. Because she's not leaving either of them. Okay. So put me for last. Okay, Tabeth. Stay. Stay, okay. Lotilla, knowing this. Uh, Theo, obviously... Uh, as he's shown, wants to stay. Sharn wants to leave. I have to stay. Okay, it is okay. split down the middle. Split the party. I'm gonna roll a d2. Okay. And whichever one wins out, we're just gonna say convinces the other somehow. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so d1, uh, or rather, if we roll a one, you stay. If we roll a two, you leave. Okay. And save what ones that are not as in danger. Okay. Here we go. You're gonna stay right. to try and save them. Oh. Phazos sighs and is going to try his best. Okay. He may as well. Yeah. Honeymoon realizes that Tibet's not gonna budge, and if Tibet's not budging, Lotilla's not budging, and she need, sure wants both of them to keep her alive. <laughs> All right. Kate, I need, so she just goes, ah! I need some action music join. because okay. we are gonna mm. do a skill challenge. Skill challenge? Wait, wait, wait I have one. Oh, yeah, oh you got I've one? also got one. If, uh, Hang you on. Um, there we go. Very nice. Okay, yeah. go ahead and roll initiative. Make sure to select your token beforehand. Oh, oh something it's green so... and slimy. Oh, again? So, uh, Honeymoon Phasos, who wants to go first between you two? Um... No, I did have a first initiative. It just wasn't under the right thing. It should be a 12. 12? Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, well, Honeymoon has a higher dex mod, so she would go first. Mm -hmm. I leave it up to player choice. Okay, well, I uh, will let Honeymoon go first. Okay, okay. then. So, th with this skill challenge, you will require four successes to s successfully save all the at-risk mass creatures. And okay. two failures... Something Good. devastating will happen. Good. So, firstly, to Beth, Tabeth. how do you want to help the masked figures, the masked creatures, rather? Tabeth. To Beth, uh, seeing that this one is hanging on for dear life, quickly stabs her rope dart into the dirt, and then gives it a solid tug to to make sure it's stable enough. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna use it. To swing down and try to scoop him and then swing back up. Wow, and acrobatics then? Ooh. Yes. Your sailor. Yes, little pirate! Yes. All right. Get that it. is one success on the board. You swing down like a pirate, like the pirate you are. You grab so the thing, yeah. you swing back up. It has been saved. Good job. Actually, I'm going to add one more for to count for the four successes. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that one has been saved. It stays the hell put, realizing that it doesn't have the the kind of ability to coordination. Yeah, the coordination, and it stays put. Lotilla. I I want to yank Theo and this little guy up. Okay. Can I do an athletics for that? You may. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. You yank. How a bummer. And you kind of yank him hard enough that because his feet were so dug into the ground, it gives way a little bit and he slips. You catch him before he falls, 
but more of the ground sinks under him and now he you are holding him by his legs as he hangs uh-huh. down holding on to the creature uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's one failure gotcha. oh, no. next honeymoon uh-huh. oh. yeah honeymoon sees sees to Beth successfully rescue that guy sees Lotilla uh, sees things are not going well with that and so she is like uh like hacker mode like eyes all over the place she starts like scanning around trying to see trying to pinpoint if there's any rhythm to the the shaky shakies try to see how fast the earth is is falling through um and try to find which places seem stable enough to direct the little wooden guys to go long enough for them to get to more stable ground so i would like her to use perception to suss out the best places for them to go okay you may all right (laughs) bing bong you just make it. <laughs> you look closely at where the ground is loosest and point out the dangerous areas. You speak out in abyssal, and you know a few of them kind of give like encouraging knocks against their masks, and one manages to just barely put it together enough to climb its way up, uh, taking your direction on which branches to grab and which areas to dig its fist into. It climbs up. That is one more success under your belt. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, Honeymoon is way, like, just gesticulating frantically. Phasos. Trying to keep her balance. All right, Phasos. Phasos is going to uh, come up over here to, like, the edge of where that new kind of thing happened, where Theo and... uh, the other one are hanging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he is going to, uh, you know, employ his tattoo ink and reach out his tendril uh, to also grab onto uh, Theo to see if, uh, with their combined strength, they may be able to pull. Give uh, me a, a athletics uh, check. Yep, let's try it. Come on! Yes! Oh, yes! Let's be right. you yank together. <laughs> and pull him up to the point where you throw him over your shoulder, just like all the way over here to safety, as he puffs, yes. holding the thing oh. clutched in his arms like a baby. No. Ah. Oh. All right, Tibby, it's all on you. It's do or die. With one more success or failure, this skill check is over. Oh, <laughs> this is so stressful. To Beth. With the final one hanging on for dear life at the edge of this now new waterfall being pushed by the water, how do you plan to help? Pushed by the water, too. Ah. <laughs> Tibeth has a sinking immediate realization uh-huh. that to get that one is going to risk serious injury to herself. But Don't she's worry, I can try. fix it. <laughs> she's going to try, so as quickly as she can muster because she knows that her rope dart alone is not going to be long enough. She grabs vines that she can, that she can get from the trees. They're about to fall into the abyss and ties them together in a makeshift rope. Hmm. Um, And I'm going to try to use a sleight of hand check to make the rope to save him. All right. Going to try and lasso (laughs) and throw the rope. Let me see that sleight of hand. (gasps) <gasps> oh, we got it! Oh, oh, holy shit! Against oh, all pounding. odds, you toss the rope just as this thing's hand slips off. It is caught by the rope, and you hang on to it, hanging down, and all of the masked creatures bang their masks in celebration. Honeymoon yells, Don't celebrate yet, let's move! And she's like dragging these two that she's got with her. Yep. Was they it? all Wait, start was to that, fall. Was that four successes? That is yep. four yes. successes. You, you were the last saved, one. You have saved all the masked creatures that were in threat of falling into the abyss. Thank God. All right. All right. Huh. However, the ground is still shaking. And yes, uh, Honeymoon's advice is apt good. as uh, you start to run. One. Yep. And oh as you run away, more of the land starts to give and fall apart. As you see, just a large portion of the island sink. Birds are flying away from the scene, and you can see whatever an- there are other animals and creatures along with you, including the wretcheds, just staring as they see their home sinking into the ground. Wait, Mr. Clyde! No! 
and she's gonna look back and like scan the the sinking oh, uh, <laughs> island, to see if he if she spots a bit of purple among there. You can away, give me though. a perception check if you would like. I would. Yeah, he was a little ways away. Might not have gotten his part. From what you can tell, it's hard to see if he would be there. You have a pretty good eye for things, and what you can see, even with your adrenaline going right now, it doesn't seem like Clyde specifically is there. However, you do spot several creatures, animals, falling into the abyss as well <sighs> that, unfortunately, were out of your reach. We have to keep moving. Yeah. Uh, as we're running... And he even says, Richie's... Yeah! Uh, <laughs> Fezos... Uh, you know, he's, you guys are running phases, he's, he's, he just curses under his breath. Damn it! I have to redraw the map! <laughs> Tabeth honey, honey, debates honey, tripping him at that po- moment. Honey, 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 even like, <laughs> half, you know, just, just like very fast and everybody's like, give me a couple more levels, I'll fly and get a map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did, I did want to say, uh, Right after you yanked uh, Theo, uh, she, Latilla was going to look to you and say, maybe we could work together in the future. Good. Good. <laughs> All right. And with that, I think this is a good place to call the session. <gasps> yeah. Christ, oh. I'm right. Wow. And uh, it will be a little while. This is a series is going to be on hiatus due to real life things going on. Um... But Someone's the next session, nailied. the next session of, ne- of uh, I almost said Necrohunt, the next <laughs> session of Golden K will be the final one. Yeah, so you got a whole a, month you gotta yeah, wait, guys. A month. I better make yep. the finale worth it. Quite the cliffhanger.